Playoff Hockey is brought to you by Bud Ice, the official beer sponsor of the NHL. Your Missouri, Illinois, Lincoln Mercury dealers. McDonald's, proud sponsors of the Blues. Have you had your break today? Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, the low fare airline. Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. The Discover card, it pays to discover. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomberito, and Brockland GMC. Boatman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Your neighborhood, St. Louis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. CMS Home Mortgage Corporation. When the bank says no, CMS says yes. Hardy, starring the best fried chicken in the game today. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, one of the most beautiful cities in North America. And on this spring day, we saw rain and clouds and a sprinkling of sunshine and also Stanley Cup fever. It's the Western Conference quarterfinals tonight, game three, with his best of seven series tied at a victory apiece. The Canucks home is the Pacific Coliseum. This is their last season here, and they're hoping they can win a Stanley Cup. Hi everybody, welcome to Canada. Ken Wilson along with Joe Micheletti. Bruce Affleck is also here for game number three. The Blues won the first game. Second game, they got an early lead. Things didn't go their way, but uh, they had the Canucks where they wanted them and it all fell apart. Well, it was a gutsy performance by Vancouver coming back from two to nothing leads by the Blues and a three to two lead late in the game. They just kept on coming and the Blues kind of got away from their game a little bit and Vancouver ends up evening the series. Todd Alec getting the first two goals to give the Blues the commanding lead. Boy, he had a tremendous game for the Blues. The first one came on the power play. Good execution from Shanahan back to Alec, and Alec early in the first gave the Blues a 1-0 lead. And then he continued that play and ended up showing his speed and his ability to go to the net. On a really what was a broken play, Steve Duchesne just dumps the puck off the boards and Alec picked it up, used his speed, and what a tremendous move to beat Kirk McLean and Everything looked great at that point with the Blues leading it two to nothing. The comeback began in the first minute of the, or the last minute of the first period. A good job by the Vancouver Canucks for checking. Now both Blues defensemen get caught in the corner. That left Momesso all alone in front of the net. Vancouver worked it in front. Momesso had plenty of time on the play and he ends up putting it past Curtis Joseph, and that put Vancouver back in the game at 2-1. The uh, Canucks then tied it early in the second period. The two teams then exchanged goals, and, well, the big difference in the entire game was Russ Cortnall who went to work. He was ineffective in game one, but in game two, he was terrific, showed his speed and his shooting ability. He waited for Curtis Joseph to go down, lean to his right, and the goal by Cortnall gave Vancouver a 4-3 lead. Pavel Bure added a goal with the Canucks shorthanded. Well, everyone was excited because the Blues were on the power play trying to tie the game, but again, it's Courtney making the play on Steve Duchesne. McKinnis also gets beat on the play, and when you give Pavel Bury as much time as he had, he had Curtis Joseph backing in, wasn't sure what he was going to do, and Bury, one of the top goal scorers in the league, on a tremendous move, beats Curtis Joseph. And that right there sealed up the game for Vancouver. Russ Cortnall was the game's number one star, a goal and three assists in game number two. Game one and game two different in many ways. Certainly the Blues didn't play as well in game two, Joe. Let's look to tonight now. What do the Blues have to do first and foremost? Well, when you think of the Blues and you think of their success during the course of the regular season, one thing that comes to mind is their excellent forecheck. They were terrific scoring even strength goals all season long. But in this series, they only have two even strength goals in two games. They've got to get back to forechecking. Vancouver did a good job of holding the Blues forecheckers up, and they had plenty of time to move the puck out of their zone. But they've got to fight through that tonight, and they have to create some turnovers on their forecheck. I guess no question they have to hit more like game number one. And game number one, they had 32 hits and ended up winning the game 2-1. to one. In game two, they only had 22 hits, and you could tell Vancouver took over the game in the second and third periods. And I guess pretty obvious, isn't it? Protect your own end, get better goaltending. Well, we saw some of the goals that Vancouver scored on Blues mistakes, mental mistakes, as Mike Keenan said. Two defensemen in the corner, allowing a defenseman like Yurke Lume to move into the slot with no one there. He scores a big goal. The shorthanded goal uh, situation as well. So the Blues have to be a little bit smarter, think a little bit better in this game, and they have to have better goaltending. 
And uh, as far as goaltending is concerned on the Vancouver side, Kirk McLean has been a standout. And everybody knows if you're going to win a playoff series, you need really great goaltending. And he's given it to him. I mean, the Blues have averaged 36 shots a game in these two games. And yet, they've, as I mentioned, they've only scored two even strength goals. What you have to do against Kirk McLean, you have to get in front of him, try and deflect him some shots, try and screen him and let those pucks go through him, as did Brett Hull's goal in game one with Shanahan in front. They need more of that. It's the era of a kind of floppy style among goaltenders. Kirk McLean really a throwback. He is a stand-up angle kind of goaltender. Bruce, you've heard the word mental here as we begin the evening, and I guess there are a lot of mental games in the playoffs. It wasn't a reference to you, I'm sure. Yes, there is a lot of mental games, and Mike Keenan talks about mental preparation. And, you know, some people think Mike Keenan's a motivator, and he is. There's no question about that. But this is a time for each individual to mentally prepare himself going into game number three here. They did not have that in game number two. Emotion is a factor in that. There's momentum changes in a game. If this morning's practice means anything, there was a lot of emotion in the practice. The players were loose. But two players, Holder and Tardif, almost went at each other. And those two are not in the lineup, of course. It's a situation where tempers can flare at each other. But that's good emotion to have, and I'm sure Mike Keenan enjoyed that. Looking at Mike Keenan, we've seen it the last two days after leaving St. Louis yesterday on the charter. He's got his game face on. You'd almost think it's life and death. He has put a challenge to his team, and especially his stars, Shanahan, Joseph, and Hall, none of whom have a Stanley Cup. He has really put a challenge to them to come out and lead this team back and take a victory in this series. So it'll be interesting to see how the games go tonight. All right, thanks, Bruce. Welcome back to British Columbia. Of course, this is home for Bruce Affleck. The veterans, he mentions them. I guess Mike Keenan puts it so simply, Joe. Your best players have to be the best players on the ice. And I think we're going to see a response tonight. I don't think there's any question. Brett Hull in the first game, and Essa Tekinen as well. When you talk about Tekinen, two games, no points, and minus three in those two games. So certainly, Mike Keenan expects a better performance out of Tekinen. I believe Tekinen will do it. Al McInnes, three points in the series, coming off the shoulder injury. Brett Hull, he had five scoring chances in game number one and had a goal and an assist. Game number two, he only had one scoring chance. So they certainly need him to come back along with Shanahan and the rest as we talked about. Well, you have an idea of some of the things we're going to look for tonight. It's the West Conference quarterfinals game three. The Blues and the Canucks, the series is tied at one. We're just about set to go here at the Pacific Coliseum. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. We are in Vancouver at the Pacific Coliseum. They are introducing each and every Vancouver Canuck player individually and getting this crowd as pumped up as they possibly can. They're waving their white towels, which is a bit of a playoff tradition here in British Columbia. And there are a few empty seats here at the Pacific Coliseum for this one. And of course, the two teams will meet here again on Saturday night in game four. Monday night next week at Kiel, game number five. Remember, that'll be a seven o'clock start called Dial Ticks 291 7600 for game five tickets. There are good seats available for game number five next Monday night at Kiel Center. I think the Blues, Joe Micheletti, are not very happy about the delayed start of this game. Well, they shouldn't be, Kenny. And this is uh, game three, and it's, it's an extremely important game, obviously, for the Blues. And when you hung around the morning skate and tried to get a feel for the atmosphere of these two teams, Vancouver is very loose. In fact, I, I think about what I saw and heard this morning, and to me, they're right on that edge where maybe they can be a little bit too comfortable. This has been a team that has not played well at home all season long, just two games above 500 during the course of the regular season. And it's also a team that generally gets off to slow starts here at home at Pacific Coliseum. The Blues had the attitude this morning, much more solemn, a little bit more intense, it seemed like. Mike Keenan was very intense. And meanwhile, as I mentioned, Vancouver, very loose. It's going to be interesting to see how this game starts. Well, the introduction of the players one by one really helps to get the crowd into it here. There is absolutely no question about it. Of course, there's a lot of other playoff action besides this Western Conference Series. Last night, the Rangers at home beat Quebec 4-3. New York leads that best of seven series, two victories to one. 
Elsewhere in the Eastern Conference, Buffalo defeats Philadelphia 3 to 1. The Flyers with a 2 to 0 one lead in that series after having a 2 to nothing lead. Washington coming back. They go home. They win 6 2 over Pittsburgh to stay alive, down two games to one. Jim Carrey, his first playoff win, of course, the rookie sensation in goal for the Caps. And how about Boston? You talk about being down and out in theory after getting shut out twice at home. They go to the Meadowlands and squeeze out a 3 2 win over the Devils. And of course, everybody in the West playing tonight. And we do know that Chicago has already won at Toronto. And uh, I would assume that that Detroit Dallas game is soon over. If not over, Detroit had a big lead in that game. They had a 4 to 1 lead after two periods of play and just dominating the Dallas Stars. There's the final. Chicago has won at Maple Leaf Gardens three to two after the Leafs won the first two games of the best of seven series at United Center. All of this on our Bud Ice scoreboard here at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. Now how about San Jose talking about the Western Conference surprising Calgary with a couple of wins there and they are just underway uh, down south of here in San Jose. Calgary in a world of hurt. Oh, they really are. And San Jose players, after the last regular season game, beaming that they were able to get it, get into seventh spot in the conference and not have to play Detroit, who outscored them 19 to 4 during the course of the regular season. Of course, Detroit probably would have been thinking a little bit of revenge after San Jose up them or uh, upset them last year in the first round. I know folks in Detroit seeing that San Jose has won the first two games with Calgary are going, ouch, not them again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, they, they, I, they have that mentality, I think, in Detroit and Red Wing fans around North America. Oh, my, we'll beat anybody, but maybe San Jose will upset us again. <laughs> yeah, you know, we talked about goaltending being so important in the playoffs and what a hot goaltender can do for you. All of a sudden, Arthur Zurbe, who had a spectacular season a year ago playing in 73 games and then playing so well in the playoffs, had a very so-so year this year, had trouble gaining his confidence, and then he comes up, now he's playing well, they go home for a couple of games, and you never know if he gets hot, some funny things can happen. The Blues have taken the ice. There's no question you feel the pressure when you go on the road for game three. And you haven't won the first two games at home. Of course, you win this game, and all of a sudden, everything seems back to normal, which only points out that the playoffs, year in and year out, are the same thing. They are a roller coaster ride, especially emotionally. You have to win on the road in the playoffs to win. And Mike Keenan has certainly been through that. And when you look at the first round of the playoffs, eight teams had home ice advantage. Only two of those eight teams won both games at home. So Mike Keenan has been through it. That's why he brought in a lot of those veteran players. And we talked about them at the outset. Tekanen, Hull has been here. Shanahan has been here, even though they haven't gone that far in the playoffs. Very, a lot of pressure on Curtis Joseph in this game tonight because there was a lot of talk and a lot of speculation as to who was going to be in goal for the Blues. And finally, late this morning is when Mike Keenan made his decision. I sense looking at Mike Keenan now and talking to him not long ago near the dressing room that he is uneasy mm, fidgety I wouldn't say nervous but certainly different than I have seen him at any time this season I would say maybe apprehensive might be a good word to describe his mood tonight coming into this game I was very very surprised and Ken his mood was very similar to that since the Blues lost after game two on the plane yesterday riding up Mike Keenan was the same way very almost unhappy had that unhappy look about him and we'll see if that will transcend to his players I think what we're going to see here tonight is a very physical game Tony Twist is in the lineup Dave Roberts the more talented player that has played so well will be sitting this one out I think the Blues are going to come out and try and play an extremely physical game. This could be one of those three hour, three hour and 15 minute games. Maybe three and a half, 345, maybe even four hours if we're lucky. <laughs> Without overtime. This may turn out to be an eight o'clock Pacific time start rather than 735. <laughs> Here are the anthems.
Sarah McLaughlin with tonight's Canadian and American National Anthems, the goaltenders for tonight's game. Back in goal for the Blues will be Curtis Joseph. Mike Keenan not happy with his performance after game two, but he goes right back with him in game number three. And in goal for the Vancouver Canucks, the veteran Kirk McLean playing in his 52nd consecutive playoff game. The starting goaltenders are brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. The officials for tonight's game, our referee tonight will be Rob Schick, the linesman Gord Brossaker, and Pat DiPuzzo. This crowd has had plenty of opportunity to build to a crescendo for the start of the contest. So have we. <laughs> We've told you all we know <laughs> awaiting the opening faceoff. It'll be Creighton between Shanahan and Hull facing off against Trevor Linden. Linden out there with Russ Cortnall and Pavel Bure, McKinnis and Barron on defense. Barron gives the puck to McKinnis. He'll weave back in his own zone. Give it to Barron up the middle for Creighton. The puck goes the length of the ice right on goal. McLean is saved. And here's Hedekin bringing it off the far glass. Kicked into the corner by McGinnis. Then here's Shanahan looking to center. He does for Holy shot. He scores! Oh, baby! 20 seconds in. Brad Hull scores! McGinnis and Shanahan set him up as McGinnis on the far boards pinches in from the right point. Great work by the Blues to score early. And Vancouver wanted to try and spring Pavel Bure early. He went behind Al McInnes out into the neutral zone to look for the puck. And Al McInnes made the good play, stepping in, intercepting the puck. And, and what a play by Hull to score the goal. Bure had come back, wasn't watching the puck, though. And Hull, right through his legs, took the shot and passed McLean. And the Blues quickly lead it. Now they puck in the Blues and they clear it ahead. Here's Shanahan up the right wing. Has trouble with the puck. Curls inside the Canuck blue line. Up pass for Hull. Tipped away. Both teams changing. Jeff Brown ahead for Linden over the line. Checked by Norton. Loose puck. Brown moves in. Gets hit by Chasse. Two on one the other way, but hold everything. There'll be a penalty call. A penalty call on Denny Chasse. Checking Jeff Brown, who is on the ice injured and appears to be seriously injured. Well, it looked like Denny Chasse ended up clipping Jeff Brown with his left leg on the left leg of Jeff Brown. Brown tried to get out of the way, saw Chasse coming, and right at the last minute, Brown just tries to move, and I'll tell you what, their knees met. The left knee of Chasse, the left knee of Jeff Brown, and Brown is in a lot of pain, still down on the ice. He hasn't moved much since he initially went down, but he took a hard blow to his left knee. Boy, what a loss that would be for Vancouver, the way Brown moves the puck, his effectiveness on the power play, the way he shoots the puck, and to lose Jeff Brown at this juncture of this series would be a serious blow to Vancouver. Boy, how things happen in a hurry. We've seen 54 seconds of hockey. And the Blues already have a goal. Brett Hall gets the goal. 20 seconds in. His second playoff goal, his third playoff point. And now Brown has to be helped off. We talked about the goal the Blues scored. What a play by Brett Hall. He was able to get the shot off after McKinnis made such a fine play at the point to keep it in and just kick it along the boards. But Pavel Burry is right next to Hall. The puck will go through the legs of Burry or right past him, and Hall will shoot it right through the legs of Burry, who's standing right next to him. But that's the strength in the hands, the arms, the forearms, and he let it go with such velocity through the legs of Burry, who was standing right there. That's why you have to try and keep an eye on the puck. If you're not going to get the man, you have to know where the puck is, and Burry didn't have either. And a guy like Brett Hall can turn things around in a hurry, and he quickly fires it right past McLean for the yearly lead. Jeff Brown being helped down to the Canucks dressing room. I have never seen a player who can score the incredible goals like Brett Hall. There are the obvious goals where you have a good scoring chance, but he has situations like this. Right when that pass comes there, Joe, I see he's got no chance of ever getting a shot. You see the concentration, though. He's watching the puck. 
preparing himself to shoot. Even though he's got a guy bearing down on him in Pavel Bure, he still makes the play to score. The Blues are shorthanded. So the Blues dump the puck in, and here's Ronnie to center ice. Left wing for Bure, and to Jeff Court and all to Bure. He feeds the puck through the slot into the near corner. After it is Ronnie. Right point to Yerke Lume. A crowd in front of Shot. He scores! Yerke Lume from the blue line ties it at one. And this goal comes at 118 of period one. At the outset of a five minute penalty given to Denny Chasse for Neen. Well, they threw it in the corner, and Barron couldn't handle it. Ronning was there. Then you mentioned it, Kenny, all the traffic in front. There were four players between the shot and Curtis Joseph. Now, Barron gets there first, but Linden is there to help out Ronning quickly on the puck. And a good play by Lumi. I believe that shot might have hit someone's skate and redirected the other way. It looked like it hit the skate of one of the Canuck players, and quickly, we have a tie game. And the Canucks have the puck in their own end. Now it's a five-minute penalty to Denny Chasse. So this is a long power play for Vancouver, and here they come up the far wing. Lume stops, loses the puck. Russ Cortnall has it, a pass that comes out to center ice. The Canucks on the power play in the first two games of the playoffs, just one for 10. And in the six games between the teams this season, Vancouver just two for 33. But they score on a power play opportunity here early and still almost four minutes to go in this power play. Here's Baranek, drop pass. Jeff Cortnall on the far side behind the net to Baranek in front. Momesso a shot. And he fails to beat Joseph. Right point, Burek. Along the near side to Baranek, straight away to Pavel Burek. Top of the right wing circle, Baranek a shot to flex wide. Behind the net, Russ Cortnall. Power play, Vancouver. It's 1-1 on the left wing side. Russ Cortnall with a puck. In front of battle, Momesso and Norton. Then Shanahan intercepts with Hull's help, a pass to Hull. Burek back to slow him up. Hull trying to get around Lume, unable to. Both teams are changing players. Burek behind his net, slides the puck in the corner to Dane Jackson. It's 1-1, coming up to the three-minute mark of the first period. Canucks at center ice, Lume ahead, right wing, Oksuda, backhand shot, stop, wrap around, and he slides the puck through the crease with Joseph sprawling. Creighton can't clear, Babbage keeps it in, shoots the puck off the boards, and Joseph clears it to center ice. Still 2.55 to go in the five-minute Vancouver power play. They scored very early in the power play to tie it. Canucks get to center ice, lose the puck, it's dumped in by McInnes in the corner. Here's Todd Ellick. He goes behind the net, taken out by Oksuda and Hedekin. Here's an opportunity now for Hedekin, feeding off far side to Dave Babbitt. Now the Canucks at center ice lose the puck, and Norton shoots it in. Now the puck in the Vancouver zone. Here's Dave Babbage. 2.20 to go in the power play. Right wing for Ronning too far. He gets slashed by Norton. Norton can't clear. Babbage takes a shot. Knocked down by Glenn Anderson. Blues can't clear the puck out. Here's Lume. Feeding to the left point. Dave Babbage a shot. And it goes off Carbono into the corner. And it's Trevor Linden. New Jeff Corton all behind the Blues net. Near side off the boards to Lume at the right point. Ahead to Ronning, tipping the puck in the corner to Jeff Cortnall. Big Trevor Linden in front of Joseph. Ronning from the right wing side, a shot right on, a save by Joseph. And he covers the rebound. Now some bumping and shoving. And the combatants are pushed aside. Hall is scored from Shanahan and McInnes at 20 seconds. And then the Canucks have come back to tie it. Lume from Ronning and Bure at 118. And what makes it difficult is the size of the Vancouver players. This time it's Linden in front of the net. Momesso was there earlier, and Joseph has to make the first save on the long shot by Cliff Ronning, and he bobbled it for a minute, but Linden so big and strong, it's difficult to get him out of the way. You have to try and get his stick, and he was there trying to get the rebound. Face off to Joseph's left. Canucks control. They've got a minute 45 to go in the power play. Bure a shot from the point wide. Lume the other point. And a shot knocked down by McInnes. He can't clear. He's tumbled down. Bure, right point, shoots. Shot blocked in front. Barron gets the puck to Hall, and he'll shoot at the length of the ice. 
4.25 gone in the opening period. It's 1-1. Ronnie ahead onside. Jeff Courtnall breaking in alone. He shoots. He scores! Jeff Courtnall! And the Canucks get a pair of early power play goals. 2-1 to one, Vancouver. Jeff Courtnall snuck behind Murray Barron and Al McKinnis. They didn't know he was there. You've got to turn your head. The play starts in the Vancouver zone with McLean up to Ronning, and Ronning quickly sees Courtnell right between the two defensemen. The perfect pass. Now McKinnis came back. Courtnell wasn't able to get too much on the shot. Joseph got a piece of it, but it just trickled in behind Joseph. He got a piece of it, couldn't get all of it. And it's 2-1 Vancouver. And the Canucks have a minute 15 to go in this five-minute power play. Lume into the blue zone to Russ Courtnall. Not a Bure in the right wing circle. He'll curl along the board. Straight away to Russ Courtnall. He moves to the far left wing side. Brink wide for Baranek. Tipped away by Ellick. Here's Baranek on the near boards below us. Feeding side of the net in front. Russ Courtnall a shot. Joseph the save, but he wasn't sure. He looked behind him into the net. Canucks lead 2-1. Blues are still shorthanded. Now at center ice, the Canucks with a puck. Baranek works back in his own end. Courtnall scores at 4.30 from Ronning and McLean to make it 2-1. Canucks at center ice. A Russ Courtnall pass knocked away. Here's Lumen. Half a minute to go. On this power play for Vancouver, Baranek through center ice. Carries into the blue zone, moves to the left wing, but the play is offside. And Zombo and Baranek run together. Dufresne trying to bump Russ Courtnall, tumbles headfirst into the boards. And this crowd is about as pumped up as I have ever seen a crowd in Vancouver, but I must say it's the first time I've ever been here for a playoff game. <laughs> and they're short three or 4,000 people here at Pacific Coliseum. Meanwhile, the Blues, you can tell the Blues players are incensed at this point as well. It was an offside. Zombo came together, and then Dufresne tried to get in. Russ Courtnell saw him coming. He just ducked down, went straight to the ice, and Dufresne ended up going up and over Courtnell and into the boards. But the tension is at a very high level here in the early going of game number three. We played just a little over five minutes, five minutes and 31 seconds. The Blues still have 23 seconds to kill off on the five-minute major for near, uh, kneeing on Denny Chasse. Blues clear the puck out of their own end. Played ahead by Cullimore onto the stick of Stoyanov, or rather, uh, I say Stoyanov, and I should say Oksuda, and the Canucks have an opportunity. Oksuda back to the right point. Babich a quick shot and a save by Joseph. Now the penalty is over. Chasse back on. Loose puck in the blue zone. And it's controlled by Creighton. Ahead to Anderson. Into the Vancouver end. He dumps the puck wide of the net. McLean plays it up the near side for Jackson. Chasse hits him and Jackson clears the center ice. Here's Murray Barrett slapping the puck in. Knocked down at the Canucks defense. Here's Babich with it. Ahead for Oksuda on with Linden and Jackson. A pass ends up on Jackson's stick to Linden. Over the line, cutting to the right wing, trying to get around Gilbert. He does, side of the net, goes behind the net, into the corner, centers for Jackson, and a shot off a skate to the corner. Here's Linden. He's grabbed by McKinnis, spun around, and there'll be a penalty to Al McKinnis. And the Blues finally touch the puck as Barron is dumped. Now some shoving in front, LaPerriere and Jackson, and then Chasse comes in and grabs Jackson with a headlock. 13-23 left, first period. Canucks 2 and the Blues 1. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Trevor Linden shows his tremendous strength. He has the puck, and the Blues are just trying to take him out of the play. He's on the puck. Finally, Al McKinnis has to try and pull him down so he can't get to the front of the net and finishes it off with a little punch to the back of the head. That was after the penalty had already been called by referee Rob Schick. And the Blues, who had to kill off a five-minute major, now have to kill off another two minutes. Linden to the left point to Lume. Now to Linden in front. Jeff Corton on a Bure a shot and a pad saved by Joseph. Oh, Bure let a rocket go. He's got the puck at the right point. Pavel Bure on the near boards to Jeff Courtnall. Straight away to Bury, and the puck skips away, and Hull breaks out up to the red line on the right wing. Over the Vancouver line, a shot, and it goes wide. And the Blues, Norton gets the puck, gets bumped.
slides it back into his own end and here's Duchesne clearing it out and the length of the ice. Two to one the Blues trail it in the first period and they're shorthanded for a minute 20. Canucks Lume in his own zone works to the blue line. Pass on the right wing to Ronnie stops over the St. Louis line gives the puck to Bure pass in front just out of Jeff Courtnall's reach. Lume at the far point ahead far side for Linden. Up front Ronnie and Courtnall with Linden the puck at the right point for Bure. Pavel Bure moves straight away feeds far circle to Linden now out to the left point to Lume right point Bure a shot knocked down Jeff Courtnall to Linden out to the far point to Lume. And a pass tipped out to center ice by Shanahan and Bure beats him to the puck across to Lume. Out of Bure as the two teams change. You can't give Bure room and Carboneau quickly makes a good defensive move to slow him up. Puck to Russ Courtnall. He's at his own line. Half a minute to go in the Vancouver man advantage. Russ Courtnall fires the puck in. Joseph leaves it behind the net. And here's Norton shooting at the length of the ice. Hall has scored for the Blues. Lume and Jeff Courtnall have power play goals for Vancouver. Hall scored right at the outset. He scored at the 22nd mark. Vancouver tied it at 118 and then added a power play goal. They have the power play here. Russ Courtnall in front. And Baranek knocked down and the puck to center ice brought back in offside. Oh, did Norton ever give Baranek a cross check high to the head area on the offside play? That's what the fans were moaning about here in Vancouver. Right as the whistle went, Norton with the cross check on Baranek. There was just barely an offside, and Cortnell tried to set up Baranek, who was looking back and for the puck and Norton was right there got the stick up high caught him first in the chest then underneath the chin the fans here thought of thought there should have been a penalty meanwhile just prior to all that on the power play what an opportunity for Pavel Burry and what a save by Curtis Joseph stopping Burry from about 20 feet out there's the face off outside the St. Louis blue line the Blues get the puck and Zombo shoots at the length of the ice now the Blues back at full strength as McInnes is on. Puck in the Vancouver end and the pass too far for Stoyanov and the puck goes right to Joseph so there's no icing. Here's Gilbert ahead for Anderson the puck off his skate. He has to slide it behind the net to Gilbert with Hunter Ford checking now back to Anderson up the left wing to Creighton Creighton Anderson and Gilbert Mike Keenan beginning to shake things up and Gilbert works in over the line ahead of the puck offside. 9.03 gone in the opening period. The Blues trail 2-1. to one. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Tomorrow night at the Keel Arena Football. The Stampede's home opener. They take on Memphis. Call dial ticks 291-7600. Tickets available also at the Keel Center box office. Great fun. Great football. Arena football starting tomorrow night. The regular season opener at Keel. Canuck shoot the puck into the blue zone. Here's Dufresne back. Stoyanov goes after him with about four strides, and he'll pick up a tripping penalty. Rob Schick says they don't argue. Go to the penalty box, and the Blues, trailing 2-1, will have a power play. Dufresne going back into his own zone. He'll make a little move on the rookie Stoyanov. Stoyanov with the left leg. He sticks it out, just catches Dufresne on the left leg, who goes down, and the Blues, who spent seven minutes of the first nine minutes and three seconds shorthanded in this game. They only trail it two to one. We'll get their first power play. Stoyanov goes off. You suspect that Mike Keenan will say anything about the fact that they were shorthanded seven minutes of the first nine plus. I imagine that'll be early in his comments after the game. Tony Twist out there. Rob Schick calling the penalty at 921 tripping on Stoyanov. And again as we mentioned at the outset Twist dressed tonight and Mike Keenan starting to shake things up from time to time and now he's got a power play opportunity blue score here and all of a sudden it's like starting over which is about what the Blues would like to have happen. Well the shots are only six to two in Vancouver again has spent seven minutes on the power play. Here is McKinnis ahead to do Shane you work to the red line on the power play over the blue line sends the puck around behind the net far side for Ellick. He gets bumped by Jackson but Hall there kicks the puck to the point but McKinnis had come out and the Blues control at center ice. McKinnis now to Alec on the left wing over the line. Into the corner. Feeds back to McKinnis. Dangerous pass to Duchesne. Right point to McKinnis. 
Ahead on the far side to Alec to Hall in the slot. A shot safe. Rebound. Shanahan stop. And Hall can't get a shot on a rebound. And the puck cleared out by Rutu. Joseph ahead to McInnes to Alec over the line. Drop pass. Shanahan into the far corner to Alec. Right point to McInnes. Near point to Duchesne. Blues looking to tie it back to McInnes. 9.40 to go here in the first period. McKinnis, a low shot wide. And the Canucks get the puck. Bure tries to work out, does. Ahead for Russ Courtnall on the right wing. A shot, and Joseph makes the save. And Ellie clears the puck out. Shanahan checked at center ice, and a bouncing puck black in the Blues end. Now Ian LaPerriere is out there. Shanahan ahead to Creighton. Over the line. Here is Creighton. Pope check. And back the other way, Cliff uh, Russ Courtnall. And one man back, it's McKinnis. Russ Courtnall feeds over to Babbage, working in a shot. He scores! Dave Babbage from Russ Courtnall. The Canucks get a shorthanded goal to lead it 3-1. Mike Keenan talked about mental mistakes. Well, the Blues make it on the power play. Adam Creighton tries to beat one of the Canucks. They're able to clear the zone. They get everybody caught up. But after there's a delay, someone should be able to pick up David Babbage. No one watches him. He just comes in from the other side. And with the long shot, beats Curtis Joseph. Excellent play by Russ Courtnell. The Blues not very alert, picking up the late man. And Dave Babbage, the veteran, scores the shorthanded goal. And it's 3-1 Vancouver. His second of the playoffs at 10.53 here in the first period, Blues have the puck in their own end. Still 18 seconds remaining in the power play. Norton up to Tikkanen. He gets short of the red line, feeds ahead right wing. LaPerriere in a shot. And McLean the save. Coming out, cutting down the angle, standing up. Creighton centers. And Rutu intercepts and clears the puck the length of the ice. Now the penalty to Stoyanov is over. Tikkanen at center ice. Makes two great moves. He's in over the line. Essa Tikkanen and curls inside the blue line. Tees it up. Takes a shot. And it's deflected wide. Here are the Canucks. Long pass by everyone. The length of the ice. Joseph clears the puck away from Jeff Cortnall to Tikkanen. Then he's hooked down. Gets the pass ahead. And it's knocked away. And here is Lume shooting the puck into the Blues end. Norton gets it out. Shot back in by Jeff Cortnall. And the Blues go back behind their net for the puck. Trailing 3-1 here in the first period and a pass up an open wing and Lume back in his own end and the Blues are changing. Yurke Lume up the middle to Jeff Cortnall. Nice feed to Linden with Bure into the blue zone. Right wing Jeff Cortnall around Anderson. Save made by Joseph on Bure. What an opportunity for Bure. I don't know how Joseph made that save and the Blues are sloppy and running around. They look lost and demoralized at the moment. In the corner, the Blues battle in their own end for the puck. It's along the far boards. Bure has his stick held. Linden gets the puck to Jeff Cortnall. A shot caught by Joseph, and he ought to hold it for an hour. And there may be a penalty call here by Rob Schick. 7.26 to go in the first period. Canucks 3, Blues 1. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Pavel Burry had an excellent opportunity. Jeff Cortnall moved the puck over. And Joseph kicked out the right leg and made the save. And then Vancouver just continued the pressure. Rick Zombo ends up taking a penalty in front of the net. He's tied up with Jeff Cortnall. Or I should say Pavel Burry, not Cortnall, but it's Burry who he is holding. And Zombo goes off. And Vancouver with another power play. Booking is the call at 12. 34 from the draw in the blue zone right point to Bure he advances the puck to Baranic into the corner to Momesso up front with Russ Cortnall. Here's Baranic working behind the Blues net into the far corner leaves the puck Norton knocks it away to Duchesne he spins can't clear it gets it again flips it to the near boards not out kept in for a moment by Bure and then the puck shot the length of the ice by Tikkanen at last goal Babbage his second of the playoffs at 10.53 from Russ Cortnall and Pavel Bure, a shorthanded goal. So the Canucks have two power play goals and a shorthanded goal. They dump the puck in. Here's Baranic, right point Bure. His shot off Joseph, high into the air, and out of play. The traffic in front of the net is really bothering Curtis Joseph. 
He's having to try and pick up the puck as it's coming through a maze of players. Vancouver doing a wonderful job. This time it's Sergio Momesso, who is 220 pounds. He's in front of the net, and the Blues defense are having a difficult time clearing the front of the net. Joseph is having to pick up the puck through a maze of players. And that last shot, he was able to pick it up just at the last minute, get the right arm up and make the save. The Canucks with a man advantage for another one minute, 16 seconds. They're two for four on the power play. They lead 3-1. They have outshot the Blues 11-5 in the opening period. They win the draw. Ronning along the near boards in the blue zone. Into the corner to Jeff Cortinelli. Loses the puck and Barron clears it the length of the ice. Barron and Dufresne. Shanahan and Carboneau killing the penalty in front of Joseph. Here's a long Lume pass to the red line. Jeff Cortinelli gives the puck to Ronning. Into the middle of the ice in the blue zone along the blue line. Ahead. Played by Lyndon to Lume, a shot blocked, and Shanahan clears the puck the length of the ice. You almost get the sense here that the Blues need to get back to really a simple pattern here. Just sort of settle down, do A, do B, do C, don't get tricky. Yeah, part of the problem, Ken, is that they've killed so many penalties or been shorthanded so much in this period that they haven't had enough opportunity to get a flow going. Now Lyndon near the blue line, far side to Lume ahead, and Dufresne gets the puck, but is just barely able to clear it out. Now back behind the play, Jeff Cortinall and Glenn Anderson mix it up. The two teams are changing at center ice Linden. Left wing for Jeff Cortinall. He'll feed into the near corner and Creighton back. But Creighton covered by Ronnie. Now the puck to Hedekin. Straight away Babbage. And a shot goes wide. And Linden in the crease bumping Joseph, but I believe pushed there by Dufresne. And that's exactly what Rob Schick is explaining to Curtis Joseph. No question the Blues defensemen have their hands full in front of the St. Louis net. Well, Linden sets up directly on top of the crease in front of Curtis Joseph. So difficult for Joseph to see anything, he actually has to change his position so he can move off and see someone. And on that particular play, it was Dufresne who was trying to clear Linden out of there and ended up clearing him into the net and the net came off its moorings, but all the traffic in front, Joseph trying to get in position, and there's Linden, Momesso when he's out there is doing the same things and really making it very difficult for Curtis Joseph and the Blues defense, as I mentioned earlier, are having a tough time. Dufresne using that age-old trick, put the stick between his legs and see where he can go now. Not very far, usually. Well, that's the best thing to do when you're trying to fight someone that's probably has a good 20 or 25 pounds on you. You've got to get the stick between the leg, twist it, turn it, and that will at least help you alleviate some of the problem. Not all of it, I might add. <laughs> Not even that <laughs> physics equation can solve the problem. Face off to the right of the Blues net, and the Blues, Creighton wins the draw from Christian Rutu. Norton behind the net. Near side for Creighton. Both teams at full strength now. Creighton stopped. Rutu shoots the puck in. Blues have been held to five shots on goal with 5-10 remaining in the opening period and they trail 3-1. Pass at center ice intercepted. Babbage shoots it in. Now a feed for Hall too far. The puck kept in by Babbage. Gloved down by Duchesne. He can't get it out nor can Creighton. And then finally at center ice and Rutu dumps it in again. Now here's Norton. Norton out to center ice. He gains the red line over the blue line. Drops the puck to Hull. He'll feed it in front. And it's tipped away. Knocked to center ice by Dane Jackson. And Anderson steals it. He'll backhand it in. And the Blues and Canucks are changing. Hedekin in the corner. Clears. Not out. The Perrier. A backhand shot off a stick into the near corner. Here's Gilbert. Pass behind the net. And Anderson can't send it in front. Canucks try to clear. Zombo keeps it in. It bounces into the far corner. Anderson there with Baranek. And Baranek gets the puck. And fires at the length of the ice. Now Dufresne racing back. And a whistle and an icing call against Vancouver. They lead 3-1. 4-14 left in the first period. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Rick Lee, the coach of the Vancouver Canucks, told his team to do three things. Shoot, be physical, and go to the net. And they've certainly done that here in the first period. All scored at 20 seconds. Lume a power play goal at 118, a power play goal from Jeff Cortnall at 430, and a shorthanded goal at 907 from Dave Babbage. That's been the story. Canucks shoot the puck the length of the ice off Dufresne. He's chased by Russ Cortnall. 
feeds ahead to Gilbert in his own end. Now it's center ice. LaPerriere over skates, and here's Baranek working in. Now to Momesso on the left wing. Bad angle, and the puck goes high off the stick of Zombo in the glass and into the crowd, and there's 3.53 to go. Maybe the best thing the Blues can hope for now is that 3.53 evaporates from that scoreboard quickly, and they get to the dressing room and regroup. Well, they've spent the whole period shorthanded, haven't had, again, I mentioned it earlier, a chance to really get any type of flow or momentum going in this game. But give Vancouver a great deal of credit. They've come out, they've hit, they've gone to the net, they've made it tough on the Blues defense. And the other thing, the time that the Blues have had the puck in their own zone and have made one pass coming out of the zone, the Vancouver defense are standing up in the neutral zone, breaking up the plays and putting the puck back in the Blues' end. Zombo from behind the net up to Tekin, and he's rammed by Oksuda. And then Tikkanen now to Hull. Three on three. Oksuda has got a hold of Tikkanen. Won't let him get to the net. And Lume intercepts a pass. Works out. Here's Rue 2 up the right wing into the St. Louis end. He'll shoot. Oh, and a great glove save by Curtis Joseph. Well, there's a confidence building save there by Curtis, who is at times in this period have looked a little bit unsure of himself. And Vancouver has quick forwards and they can go the other way in a hurry. They make the defensive play, then they come back three on two and before the Blues can really catch up the long shot and Curtis Joseph has to make the save on Christian Rutu. Boy, good save too. The shot again through some traffic. Joseph back in the net a little bit, but he's able with the left glove to make the save. Face off to Curtis's left. 3.31 remaining in the first period. They drop the puck and have a false start, and they'll have a face off again. I watch uh, Vancouver Joe in game one. About midway through that game, I said, There's no way this Canuck team can beat the Blues in this playoff series. They're a 500 team. They didn't play very well. Then you see game two, and you say, Well, they played pretty well. Now you see him here tonight. And I, I asked this question How in the world could they play 500 hockey through 48 games? as well as they have played in this first period and the other night in St. Louis because uh, you know how many games can you underachieve in. Well they did the same thing last year. Oh, and that's the point last last season they were only one game over 500 and then had the remarkable run in the playoffs. And that gives them confidence I guess in the playoffs this season. Deacon and shoots the puck in. Canucks have trouble Hull gets the puck. Watton lost his stick after unable to being unable to clear and here's Bure through center ice stopped by Duchesne taken and trying to get to the puck he's hooked then Babbage is shot from well out and Joseph the save Linden in the corner bumped by Duchesne ahead to Tekin and out of his own end to Norton Norton over the line he gets bumped by Jeff Cortnall taken to the boards by Dave Babbage and a loose puck in the corner for Hull back to the blue line great pass to Shane a shot and a good save by Kirk McLean who always seems to be in the right spot. Jeff Courtnall gets a pass from Trevor Linden fires the puck deep into the blue zone off the glass both teams changing. Here's Glenn Anderson pass ahead too far for Ellick. Then Tim Hunter into his own end to Lume back for Hunter too far and Dufresne fires the puck in but the Blues are offside and play stop with 227 remaining in the first period and the Blues are trailing Vancouver three to one fans it's not hockey without ice but ice and but ice light the official beer sponsor of the NHL Kenny I think the other thing to keep in mind is just to think back of the type of team that we have seen all season long the Blues on many occasions have trailed one nothing two nothing three one in games and they've been able to keep their composure and stay with their system and slowly they chip away. We've seen them come back many times and win games after falling behind early. We certainly have. The only thing that concerns me a little bit I think we saw a period here of three minutes or so where they looked like they had little composure and little idea which was something I don't think we have really seen in the regular season and that's not to say they can't recover and come back but I think I think Joe we might have seen a new depth in the learning curve a new bottoming out in the learning curve if you will at one point in this period. Well they weren't they weren't playing in their end very well and even the shorthanded goal a mistake that normally you don't see this team make again in the regular season they gave up two shorthanded goals and that was in one game against Toronto now in this series two games they've given up a shorthanded goal but 
Vancouver came down the ice and no one looked around to pick up the late man. Zombo gets the puck out of his own end. Here's Brett Hedekin at center ice up to Rutu. He'll shoot it in. Rutu with Jackson and Oksuda. Jackson hits Dufresne. Anderson gets the puck, backhands it high in the air, and it'll come down in the Vancouver zone. Lume back. Remember, the Canucks lost Jeff Brown early in the game. He was kneed by Chasse, who took a five-minute penalty. The Canucks scored twice with that five-minute power play. They get the puck in, and Dufresne takes it. Up the far wing, over the blue line to the red line to Alec, into the Vancouver zone, left wing to Shanahan, around the move, centers, and Duchesne a shot, save in a crowd, and McLean sitting down has the puck covered. Boy, he doesn't fluster, he really holds his ground. A stand up goaltender. We mentioned at the outset, you don't see many like him anymore, and he is just right there. He's just very, very focused on his positioning. And he was standing up, even with Todd Ellick getting knocked into the crease. McLean stayed on his feet and was able to make the save on Duchesne. The long shot came through people, and McLean didn't go down. He stayed up, was able to move to his left, and this is very difficult. He has to keep his concentration with all the traffic in front of him. He's there. He's able to move over to the left as he saw the puck makes the save and ends up with the puck in front of him. Terrific save by McClain. And Dane Jackson will be penalized and the Blues will have another power play trailing 3-1 here late. 1820 of the first period the time of the Vancouver penalty. And now the Blues need to get some shots. See if they can't get a goal late in the period. They've been outshot 14 to 7 in this first period and going back to the first two games Vancouver had a total of 14 shots in the first two periods of the two games. From the faceoff, Hall gets the puck back to the point to Norton. He'll send it toward the net. Deflection by Creighton. And McLean right there to make the save. Duchesne pinches in. In the corner to Tikkanen. Now to Creighton behind the net. Far side for Tikkanen. And then they lose the puck, and Rutu shoots it the length of the ice. The Blues 0 for 1 on the power play. They did have four shots on the first power play. So Jackson in the box. Here is Norton ahead to Tekin and over the red line. He'll risk the puck in off the boards and a shot by Duchesne. Great save by McLean. Tekin in with a puck. Side of the net to Creighton in front for Hall. He's spun around by Russ Kortnoff. Bure knocks the puck to center ice. Taken down by Duchesne and the fans here don't like it. Norton gives the puck to Duchesne. Back to Norton. Under a minute to go in the first period. Up to Tekin and into the Vancouver end. He's in the left wing circle. Feeds in front off a of skate and Lume gets the puck and backhands it down the ice. There's a minute to go now in this Blues power play, but less than that left in the first period. Blues are down 3-1. Out of their own end, up to Hull. He's at the red line. Into the Vancouver zone, left wing to Shanahan. Working to the corner. Pass behind the net. Hull went the other way. Lume gets the puck, feeds it into the far corner to Rutu. And he'll clear it off to Frame to center ice. 18 seconds remaining in the first period. Blues have a power play. Out of Shanahan, left wing to Dufresne, working in. He'll shoot. Oh, the pad save by McLean. He was really tested by Dufresne, and the puck comes to center ice, and that is going to do it. Blues shoot the puck in. Lume has it, and that is the end of a first period that's very favorable to the hometown Canucks. Now, Elliott gets in a shoving match at the end of the period, and LaPerriere comes in. Then Shanahan comes in, takes a swing at Linden, and Shanahan will get a penalty. First, it was LaPerriere coming in in defense of Todd Ellick, and then Shanahan comes in, punches Trevor Linden, and Shanahan will get a penalty, and the Blues apparently will be shorthanded to begin the second period. Well, with about 10 seconds left to go, it was McLean who made a fine save on Don Dufresne coming down the left wing, and then as the Canucks cleared the zone, the buzzer will eventually go with the puck in the Canucks zone, out on the ice, LaPerriere is there. There's a scramble in front of the net. Shanahan was already heading to the bench. He went back into the situation and threw a punch, and he'll get the extra two minutes at the start of the second period. So it doesn't pay to take that extra punch. Remember, the Canucks will be shorthanded for the first 20 seconds of the next period. So hopefully for the Blues, things will improve. Shanahan gets two for cross-checking at 20 minutes. After one period at the Pacific Coliseum, it's the Canucks three and the Blues one. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. 
period. Both teams are shorthanded. Canucks control. Babich ahead for Ronnie. He'll play it off the far boards and shoot the puck in. Jackson back in 10 seconds for the Canucks. Puck deep in the Blues end. Norton checked along the boards. Ronning gets the puck after the hit by Linden. And now there'll be a penalty or two. Rob Schick pointing at Trevor Linden and Jeff Norton. Just 17 seconds here into the second period. I believe it's going to be Trevor Linden that'll go off. He took Norton heavily into the boards from behind. And the call will go on Linden. And then after the play, Linden was hit and went down to his knees. But Linden will go off. And what we'll end up having here is a four on three for the Blues for the next three seconds. And then we'll play four on four. Norton started it with a bit of a slash. And then Linden, Linden went down. Looked and like referee, anything happened. No, I really didn't. And Rob Schick made the call. I believe both Linden and Norton are going to go off. That's the call, so I believe it's a call. I believe you Norton, tell me the call. Norton gets two for slashing. And then Linden gets two for elbowing here at 17 seconds. It's four on four. Face off in the neutral zone. Lume backs into his own end. Pursued by Hall. Flips the puck to Oksuda. He leaves it for Bure. Now the penalty is over to Jackson. Now the Canucks work in. Rotting left wing. A shot off Joseph. Right side. Bure a drive. Yeah, that gets by Joseph and goes off his skate or the post and wide. And the puck sent deep into the Vancouver end. The Blues are shorthanded. Shanahan's roughing penalty at the 20 minute mark of the first period. A minute 10 to go over the line. Ronnie into the board goes Lume on a hit by Barron in front of Oksuda alone and stopped at point blank range by Joseph. Here's Hall for the shorthanded Blues to Tekin it in front. Hall deflection and a great save by McLean behind the play. Tekin and taken down by Lume. Here's Bure into the blue zone. Out of the right wing boards into the corner to Ronnie back to Bure back to Ronnie Lume's at the left point Ronnie gives Lume the puck moving into the left wing circle in front Jeff Courtney on a shot and the save by Joseph and Hall shoots the puck the length of the ice half a minute to go in the Vancouver power play they already lead three to one puck deep in the Vancouver zone Dave Babbage with it Babbage gets the puck ahead at center ice it's Russ Courtney and the stop by Carbono and Duchesne. Babbage in front of the Blues bench. Rink wide. Too far for Baranek. And Russ Courtnall has the puck. Leaves it at his own line for Bure. Now to Courtnall. Russ Courtnall into the blue zone. Nice poke check by Duchesne. He can't clear the puck out. Babbage keeps it in. Behind the net to Russ Courtnall. Looking to center. Out to the left point to Cullimore. Back to full strength. The Blues. Shot hits Alec and comes to Shanahan. And he just clears it out, and Babbitt shoots it back in. Back for the Blues, Dufresne behind the net. He's on with Duchesne. Up front, Shanahan with Ellick and Carbono. Nice pass up to Ellick. He makes a nice move into the Vancouver zone on the left wing, into the corner. Now behind the net, taken out by Cullimore. And Carbono there, checked by Watton. And Momesso gets the puck. Up to Russ Cortinal. He can't get around Murray Barron. Finally, the puck to the blue line, but Carbono keeps it in. Sending it behind the Vancouver net where Mark Watton takes it. It's intercepted. Carbono is shot and standing tall at the post to make the save. McLean coming up to the three minute mark of the second period. Canucks clear the zone. McKinnis drives the puck back in. And it comes out to center ice off the stick of Cullimore. Now intercepting Creighton and he backhands it in. McLean scoops the puck up the near boards. Oksuda lets it go and it's center ice. Here's Zombo. He'll backhand the puck in. Lose a little steadier here at the outset of the second period. McLean clears far side. Dufresne pinches in. Creighton is alone in front, but the pass deflects away. Back the other way, Oksuda. Up to Dane Jackson. Into the St. Louis end, a drop pass for Oksuda. He slides the puck ahead and Zombo takes over. Veteran defenseman Rick Zombo. Far wing off the skate of Gilbert, then Dufresne plays the puck off the boards, and here's Babbage. Now to Oksuda, two on one. To his left is Jackson. Over to Jackson, he shoots! And the puck deflects wide. Now Dufresne clears the puck 
and it'll go the length of the ice. Back to touch it, Brett Hedekin, and an icing call against the Blues. They trail Vancouver 3-1 in the second period. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. And even strength, two on one for Vancouver. Oksuda with the puck, the perfect pass to Jackson. He has the wide open net on the short side, but fired it to the other side. Joseph gets a piece of it. Face off in the Blues end. Quick save, Joseph. The puck to Chasse. He clears it out. Man, he's slammed down big time by Stoyanov. Puck shot in by Tim Hunter. Ronning is on with Stoyanov and Hunter. Blues clear the puck up the boards. Tipped out by Chasse. Hedekin leaves it. Then Hunter slams Chasse down from behind. Chasse getting tired of being on the ice. Ronning in his own end to Hedekin. Loses the puck. Then moving in LaPerriere. He's stopped by Hedekin. Loose puck for Chasse. Heading to the slot. In front. Twist a shot. And he's stopped by McClain. And twist hammers into Hunter. Canucks have the puck. Hedekin near side. For Stoyanov. Up now to Ronnie. He'll bounce one in wide of the Blues net. Joseph leaves it behind the net for McKinnis. Vancouver changing. McKinnis up to LaPerriere. Can't get it out. Then a collision as Chasse spins McKinnis around. McKinnis kind of favoring his left shoulder a bit. Canucks work in. Lume feeds the puck in. It goes behind the net. Joseph kicks it onto the stick of Linden. Then Barron is there and he clears the puck the length of the ice. Boy, the Blues look very, very tentative. Back to touch the puck. It is Jason Cullimore, and that's an icing call against the Blues here at 5.06 of a scoreless second period with the Blues trailing it 3-1. to one. Well, this was the scene of Tony Twist scoring his first NHL goal, game number two this, this season. And this time, Chasse sets up Tony Twist in front. He gets a shot off, but Kirk McLean is there again to make the save. Mike Keenan said before game one, his biggest concern with Vancouver was very simply Kirk McClain. Well, he's been terrific. He's faced 13 shots in this game. He has stopped all but the first shot of the game by Brett Hall, but he stands there. He holds his ground. He's very composed, and the Blues are having a difficult time solving him. Blues have the puck in their own end. Norton checked by Momesso. Loose puck in the corner for Russ Courtnall. Not a Lume, a shot to save. Rebound, a perfect example of how the Blues have played and how the Canucks have played. If you just saw the replay of this goal, it summarizes really the entire game. Now we talked about the Blues defense having a difficult time with the big Vancouver forwards. In front of the net is Sergio Momesso. He's with Norton. The first save by Joseph. He's down, but Momesso just fights off Norton, turns, and fires the high shot with Joseph down on the ice. He just out muscles Norton, lets the shot go as he's falling down over the right shoulder, and it's 4 to 1 Vancouver. 5-16 of the second period, the time of Momesso's second playoff goal. Here's Brett Hull. Pass ahead to Tikkanen. Tikkanen shoots the puck in. It's Creighton, Tikkanen, and Hall, Duchesne, and Norton. Blues can't control. Momesso gets the puck out to Russ Courtnall. It's a four on two in front. And the pass by Cullimore, but Joseph the save, and Duchesne feeds over to Tekin, and now a two-on-one. Lume back, Hall on the right wing. Oh, and a pass for Hall, knocked away by Lume. And they puck sent into the Blues end, and they'll wave off icing. 5-16, Momesso's second from Russ Courtnall, and Yerke Lume. Now Jeff Courtnall works in, and a shot deflects off Duchesne over the net, the glass, and into the crowd. 4-1 Canucks lead it. Let's pause here. Five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Well, the Canucks have the Blues reeling. The other thing that they're doing in this game is they're able to make the long pass from their zone to the speedy Vancouver forwards flying up the middle of the ice. We're seeing two on ones, three on twos, four on two. Vancouver just had, and the Blues have got to have players back and prevent those odd man rushes, or this is going to be a short series. All scored 20 seconds into the game. Then a five minute major penalty to Denny Chasse. It's been all Vancouver since. 
They scored twice on that power play. Here from the faceoff, the puck to the right point, and Dave Babbage backhands it into the crowd. So Lume, Jeff Cortnall, and Babbage score in the first period. Lume and Jeff Cortnall on that five minute power play. Babbage short handed, and now at even strength, Momesso scores here in the second period to make it 4 1. In San Jose, by the way, Calgary down two games to none in the second period, leading the Sharks 6 to 2. Puck shot in by Hedekin. There's Zombo. He's on defense with Dufresne. A pass for Ellick. Out of his own end. Up to the red line. Ellick shoots the puck in off Babbage. Skating back to get it. Jeff Courtnall clears it around near side. Right point. It's Zombo. Slap shot right on. McLean the save. Rebound. Ellick trying to get a stick on it. Can't. Tied up by Babbage. Pushed into the corner. Here's Glenn Anderson. Left point. Dufresne. Firing around behind the net. Ellick there centers and the puck tipped away. Jeff Courtnall feeds it out on the right wing. Bure races to the red line. Races into the blue zone. Fakes a pass. Goes behind the net. Tries to work in front. Forced to the near boards. Now a pass knocked away by Shanahan. Ellick feeds up to Shanahan. He cuts in on the left wing against Watt and stops. Blues are changing. He'll send the puck behind the net and here's Jurke Lume. Chasse misses him on a check attempt. Bure tips the puck to the blue line. Not out. Kept in by LaPerriere. Behind the net, Chasse and Shanahan. And now Rob Schick is going to wave off, I believe, LaPerriere. Maybe Jeff Cortnall also. They got involved. All of this with 12.34 left in the second period. The Blues trail the Canucks here in game three, four to one. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. 12.34 to go in this second period. The Blues trailing the Vancouver Canucks 4-1, to one, and we'll have more four-on-four four action as a player from each side heads off. Jeff Cortnall, two for elbowing. Ian LaPerriere, two for roughing at 7.26. Face off to Kirk McLean's left. Ronning and Tikkanen. Puck comes high in the air. Far side, Norton, quick shot. But the puck was knocked down by a Blues player with a high stick. And when Norton touches it, Rob Schick, the referee, blows the whistle. The Canucks here tonight dominating, trying to take a two to one lead in this series with game four here at the Pacific Coliseum on Saturday night. And the Blues, very simply in this game, have not been able to get on track as of yet. Vancouver was two for five on the power play. That in the first period, and the Blues weren't able to get any type of flow going. It's been relatively the same here in the second period. Vancouver playing very strong. The Blues still trying to get some confidence and trying to get some scoring chances. Puck in the Vancouver end. Canucks clear it out. Norton back in his own end. Along the near boards for Duchesne at center ice. Ahead for Hall. Lume steals. Then it's tipped by Tekin into Hall. Right wing. Fakes. Tries to move in front. Can't check from behind. Nice defensive play by the kid. Defenseman Watton up the right wing. Partial breakaway. Russ Corton all a shot. And a pad saved by Joseph. Norton was coming back. And Courtnall was running out of room. Hull takes a pass from Tekin and works in. Cuts to the far wing. Tekin is in front. Hull behind the net. Feeds in front for Duchesne. Puck tipped away. Barron sends the puck behind the net. And the Canucks. Yurke Lume intercepts. Long pass for Bure offside. He takes it over the center. Checkered red line. Well, there will definitely be a game five. That'll be Monday night back in St. Louis at Keel Center. There are good seats available. You can stop by the Keel Center box office, all the usual blues ticket outlets, or call Dial Ticks 291 7600. Game five, the Blues and the Canucks in this quarterfinal best of seven series. The Blues are trailing 4 1. They seemed a bit anxious and tight today. Mike Keenan, I thought, felt, uh, looked like, I felt rather apprehensive, sounded that way before the game. You got the idea that the Canucks had the confidence coming into this game. Here's Hedekin out of his own end up the near side to the red line into the blue zone and the play is offside. He loses control of the puck putting himself offside. Well Brett Hedekin looks like a different hockey player than what we saw of him early last season and he was talking the other day about what the playoff run did for his confidence last year he said even this first game of the playoffs in St. Louis felt like it was one of one of the games in the final series and uh, he talked about getting another chance having the opportunity to go through that experience 
and having this organization was very patient with him, and he played extremely well in the playoffs, and he's had another good year for Vancouver. Buck deep in the Blues end. Barron takes it behind the net. 53 seconds to go in this four on four to Anderson. Back to Barron. He gets up to the red line, and he'll backhand the puck in. Barron and McKinnis, Anderson and Creighton. McLean handles the puck, slides it to Linden. Now ahead to Bure. Bure to the near board, stops. Slides the puck ahead. Anderson intercepts. He's hit by Linden. And the puck hits the back of the net. Played by Creighton. Canucks have by far been the better four-checking team tonight. McKinnis a pass, and it deflects into the Vancouver players' bench. When we started the evening, Joe, we talked about the things the Blues had to do. First thing we said they had to four-check. Second thing we said they had to do was hit, hit, hit. And there's been little of either. Well, they've had they had three hits in the first period. But again, granted, they were shorthanded for most of the period, but they only had three hits. Their four check has really been a disappointment in this game tonight because they haven't been able to get the puck in deep and they're not moving up the ice with any speed at all. They're not jumping on the Vancouver defense that are now have just five defensemen with Brown going out in the first couple of minutes of the first period. They're not wearing out the Vancouver defense and they're just simply not having a problem moving it out of their own zone. Jeff Brown, by the way, suffered a bruised thigh out for tonight and is classified as day to day. Puck deep in the Blues end. Route two is all over Norton. Ellick comes back, loses the puck. Then it's slapped away from Rutu. Then it's centered. Ellick back to take it away from Jackson. Boy, Rutu and Jackson forechecking well here. Here is Norton. Still with not much room. Over to Shanahan through center ice into the Vancouver end. Drops the puck. Left wing for Ellick. Feed back. Tipped away from Shanahan. He's centered. Jackson intercepts. Teams back at full strength. Rutu ahead to Jeff Courtenall behind the play. There'll be a penalty call. Jason Cullimore ends up down on the ice. And Rob Schick goes to the penalty box. He is going to call a slashing penalty against Dane Jackson. I thought it was going the other way to tell you the truth with Cullimore going down behind the play. And now Yurke Lume arguing the call with referee Rob Schick. And the Blues will end up on the power play. Cullimore ended up taking a hit, or I should say Jackson took the hit from Ian LaPerriere and then gets his stick up on the play and into Ian LaPerriere's face. But the call is slashing, and the Blues with an opportunity now. They go back on the power play. They have been outshot 21-14, outscored 4-1. 9.34 the time of the slashing penalty. The Blues 0 for 2 on the power play. Five of their shots have come when they've had the man advantage. And that's been the story of the game thus far, Ken. Two power play goals for Vancouver, plus a shorthanded goal. And the Blues 0 for 2 in their power play attempts. Uh, the faceoff outside the Vancouver blue line. Shanahan, Ellick, and Hull. McKinnis on the right point. Duchesne on the left point. Rick Lee counters with Russ Courtnall and Pavel Bure. Dave Babich and Brett Hedekin in front of Kirk McLean. At the red line, McKinnis across the way. Duchesne, he'll shoot it in. McLean lets the puck go behind the net out the near side. Shanahan in the corner battling Hedekin. Loose puck for Ellick. Right point to McKinnis. Straight away to Duchesne. Right point McKinnis. Now Ellick. Ellick along the near boards. In front. The puck kicked away from Hall. Covered by Babbitt. Shanahan to Duchesne. Near corner. Shanahan now to Ellick. Right point to McKinnis. You get the idea McKinnis doesn't really feel comfortable shooting. He's had one good shot from the point. Maybe two in the three games. You know, you wonder about the shoulder. Puck deep in the Vancouver end. Ellick behind the net. Near corner for Hull. Back to the right point to McKinnis. Left point to Duchesne. Back to McKinnis. He steps into one. And the shot blocked by Hedekin. He takes it in the ankle. And the puck cleared down the ice. Hedekin slow in getting up. Hedekin thinks the shoulder is fine. <laughs> He let one go, but tried to move in. Now Shanahan gathers in a loose puck, takes a shot, and standing up right at the post, Kirk McLean makes the save and holds on to get a whistle with 53 seconds to go in the Blues' power play. I think McKinnis just keeps looking to make the pass, and I don't think he's thinking shoot, he's thinking pass. So when he gets the puck, he's looking around, but this time he moved in from the top of the circle, let it go hard, and... Hedekin, who was standing a little bit sideways, seemed to catch the shot somewhere on the side of the ankle, went down, was able to limp to the Vancouver 
bench. Now he's turned the other way, and the trainer is working on one of the ankles of Brett Hedekin. Power play blues. They trail 4-1, 9-19 remaining in the second period. LaPerriere between Tekin and Anderson. McKinnis and Duchesne stay out on the points. LaPerriere will try to win the draw from Route 2. He does. Tekinen has his stick held, gets the puck back to McKinnis. He flings it behind the net. Lume after it. He'll feed it off the boards, gets his own pass, and shoots the puck out. McKinnis back in his own end. He'll give the puck to teammate Glenn Anderson. He's checked by Rutu. McKinnis carries on over the line. Pope checked. The puck goes to Tekinen. Far corner. Not a LaPerriere. Rutu gets in the way. Duchesne keeping the puck in. And Rutu slides at the length of the ice. And the Canucks will change their penalty killers. Loser down 4-1. 15 seconds left in Dane Jackson's penalty. Here's McKinnis slapping the puck in around behind the net out the far side. Lume tips it in the air. Then uh, Veranic gets his stick up, catches LaPerriere, and there's going to be a penalty. With four seconds left in the Jackson penalty, it looks like Joseph Veranic will go off. And maybe any chance of five? Don't see any blood. He's trying to find some blood, isn't he? He's, I, I'd he's like to have him and find it. He's and doing everything he can to find some blood. Veranic was actually trying to knock the puck out of midair and didn't see LaPerriere coming from behind him. Down in the left corner, Branick is 42. He didn't know LaPerriere was there. He was swinging at the puck, ended up catching LaPerriere in the chin. And Branick goes off for two minutes. So the Blues will have a very brief five on three manpower advantage. The important thing is the faceoff is deep in the Vancouver zone. So the Blues need to win the faceoff, work it around for their first good shot. One change tonight for the Blues. That was the insertion of Tony Twist. And Dave Roberts sitting this one out. We have seen twists, two, three shifts maybe, and rather short shifts. Well, I, I'm a little surprised by that move, and I can understand what Mike Keenan is saying about wanting more size in his lineup. But I think back to the last month in the line with David Roberts centering Brett Hall and Essa Tikkanen, to me, was a very good line. They played together the first game, but not the second game. Or one shift towards the end of the game. And the Roberts had played pretty well, and he could certainly be used in a game where they need to score goals. 11.30, the time of the high-sticking penalty on Baranek. Blues have a four-second two-man advantage, but they don't win the faceoff. Dave Babbage gets the puck, clears it not out. McKinnis keeps it in. One man back for the Canucks in the corner to Shanahan. Along the near boards for Tekin, and the puck slips away, and it's out through center ice, back into the St. Louis end. The Blues have the one goal, 20 seconds into the game, scored by Brett Hull. They got into a deep hole, and now they're trying to come back. Duchesne fires the puck in. Hall after it. Flips it into the corner. It goes behind the net. Shanahan comes up with it. Into the far corner. Now left point to Duchesne. Right point to McKinnis. Ahead on the right wing side to Tekinen. Tekinen looking for Hall. He's wide open. Out of the point. Back to Tekinen. Side of the net to Shanahan. In the slot, Duchesne takes a little shot that trickles wide. He had a problem. He was on his backhand, tried to get to his forehand. Now McKinnis at the right point. Flips the puck along the rail. It goes behind the net. Cullimore slaps it to the corner. Here's Essa Tikkanen. A minute left in the Blues power play. Tikkanen top of the right wing circle. In the corner to Shanahan. Blues trying to be patient. Off a skate, Hull digs the puck out of the corner. Leaves the puck on the near right wing boards for Tikkanen. He'll blast right on. Stick save. By McLean, Babbage controls the rebound. Tries to clear. Tekin and knocks the puck down. Has it on the near boards. Tangled up with Cullimore. They both go down. Shanahan has the puck in the corner. Shanahan in front. Duchesne a shot stop. Canucks can't clear. McKinnis keeps it in. Here's Tekin. Well away from the net on the near boards. In the corner to Hull. Hull to Shanahan a shot. That's blocked. And the puck trickles to McLean, who sitting down grabs it. Shanahan's shot was stopped before it reached McLean. Now, I'm not sure if he just fanned on the shot, Ken, or if Cullimore was there to lift the stick, but it was a great setup by Brett Hall from the goal line, and Shanahan just looked like he fanned on it, and then maybe the shot was blocked somewhat, but it ended up, ended up rolling into Kirk McLean, and he's able to make the save. Now, just prior to that, it was Shanahan setting up Steve Duchesne who let go a quick shot, and Kirk McLean was over there. Difficult 
position for Steve Duchesne to get anything on the shot being that left hand shot. He has to wait for the puck and he didn't have much leverage. He was still able to get it on net, but really a fairly easy save for Kirk McLean. Face off to McLean's left. 21 seconds to go in Baranek's penalty. Under seven remaining in the second period. 4-1 Vancouver. Watton in the corner. Checked by Chasse. Creighton beaten to the puck. Lume has it. Can't get it out. Ellick wheels a shot blocked by Watton. The puck to Creighton. Then Linden intercepts and clears it the length of the ice. Blues will go back. Here's Jeff Norton. Canucks killing the penalty with Lume and Watton. Bure and Linden. Now back on Baranek, right wing to Creighton over the Vancouver line with a bouncing puck in the corner. Now here's Ellick. He's tied up by Bure. The puck comes loose. Creighton with his long reach gets it to Ellick. He gets bumped by Watton. Watton down, loses his glove, has already lost his stick, and the puck on Ellick's stick. Back to the right point. Out it comes, and Norton sends the puck back in offside. 6.07 left in the second period. The Blues are down 4-1 here in game three. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The Blues are in trouble. Mike Keenan said something interesting before the game. When I asked him about the last couple of days, he said, we've got players who have been there in the playoffs and won in the playoffs, but this group has never done it. Well they look right now Ken like they're the team that's frustrated they don't seem to have too much life Vancouver has been the team that has been composed throughout this game and looks like the team that went to the finals a year ago. Colomore right wing to Bomesso he'll dump the puck in Joseph leaves it for Zombo behind the net. I had not to La Perriere over the red line he'll wind her up a shot off Colomore wide out of the corner in front cleared back to the corner it's centered by Dufresne off a stick Zombo keeps it in at the blue line. Has problems, gets hit by Babbitt, speeds in the corner for LaPerriere. He's grabbed and held onto by Baranek. Then Babbitt wraps up Gilbert in the corner. He can't get loose. Babbitt has him held. They try to kick at the puck. Rob Schick leaning on the boards back of the net. He finally says, I'll blow the whistle. And there's 5.13 remaining. In the second period, Blues trail it 4 1. And I think what this blue team needs right now is something just to give them a little bit of life either a, a, a good sequence of four checking getting some hitting going some scoring chance even if they don't score they need something to get them going again because right now they look like a team that's really searching and they look like a team that's kind of they're looking to one another for somebody to do something and they need to get something going here just to try and get them back into this game and give them some life. There's still plenty of time left in this game. 513 left here in the second period. In San Jose in the third period Calgary leads 6 2. They trail the Sharks two games to none. Chicago won 3 2 at Toronto. Detroit won 5 1 at Dallas. Detroit has a 3 to nothing lead in that best of seven series. Now twist is out. Watton clears the puck out, takes a mean hit from Twist. McKinnis in his own end hits the linesman on the far side. Lume can't shoot the puck in. He has it at center ice. Back to the defense to Watton. It slips away. Hull goes after the puck. He's hooked down by Watton. And there'll be a penalty, a holding penalty, on the 21-year-old first-year pro, Mark Watton. Another Blues power play. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Brett Hall makes a smart play. He just stops, and Mark Watton doesn't know what to do. He tries to get by him, but first grabs him around the left shoulder, pulls him down, and the rookie playing in just his second playoff game goes off for Vancouver, and the Blues with another power play chance. They're 0 for 4. They have had half their shots in this game on the power play. The Canucks have had one-third of their shots with a man advantage. They have two power play goals. And this man with a puck, Babbage, has a shorthanded goal. He gets to his own line ahead for Route 2. He'll fake a shot and then has the puck slip away, and it's Ellick. Far side for Duchesne, up to the blue line. Hull at center ice, right wing to Shanahan, moving in on Babbage, shoots the puck behind the net. McLean there, clears it. Shanahan intercepts, feeds it in front, and slides it wide as Ellick is taken down. Here's Lume with a lot of room. Out of his own end, up the right wing, into the blue zone. It's a three on two. Lume in front to Rutu. He'll take a shot and hits McKinnis. Rutu just dumps the puck behind the net. Duchesne has it. 118 to go in the Blues power play. Up the far wing. Puck skips away from Hall, and here's Lume dumping it in right to Curtis Joseph. 
Linden, Bure, Cullimore, and Lume killing the penalty now for Vancouver. Here's Ellick at center ice. Flips the puck in right to Lume, and he'll shoot at the length of the ice. Well, the Blues are trying to carry the puck over the blue line, and Vancouver is standing up at the blue line and forcing it. They've got to dump it in, get past those defensemen, and try and dig the puck out. Here's Norton, left wing, taking it long, shot, shoulder high, caught, and held by McLean. We'll have a faceoff deep in the Vancouver end. Well, this is part of the frustration that the Blues are having right now. They're on the power play, and the long pass goes all the way across to Essa Tikkanen, and the Blues have been so frustrated that Tikkanen just decides to take the long shot. That's from just inside the blue line. No one in front at all, and McLean is there to make the easy save. Now Vancouver will try to win the faceoff and just clear the puck down the ice. They've got Linden out there to face off with Creighton. In the circle to McLean's right. 3.35 left. Second period. 45 seconds to go in this St. Louis power play, and they win the draw. Babbage gets the puck, plays it off the boards, out to center ice. And the Blues have to regroup. Norton at the St. Louis line. Ahead to Creighton. He'll shoot the puck in. Behind the net, McLean slows it down. Cullimore in the corner. Flips it ahead. Creighton gloves it down. Works to the corner. Behind the net for Hall. The puck gets by him. Then pinching in, Norton, then Creighton takes out Linden. Here's Norton to Tikkanen. Tikkanen has to weave back by the blue line on the near right wing. Advances even with the dot. Sends the puck in front and it goes off Norton's stick right back to Tikkanen. Tikkanen along the boards, back to the right point, Duchesne. Far side for Hall. Hall near side, Tikkanen in front, Norton on his backhand, and he can't get a shot. The penalty is over. Watton back on, not a Hall! Shot right on! Boy, Creighton, the big guy right in front. You can't screen much more, but McLean is about as technically and mechanically strong as any goaltender in the NHL, and he just stands right there to make the save. And I'm not sure how Brett Hall got the shot off. He was being hooked just as he took the shot from Watton, who came out of the box. But you're right, Ken. Two players, big players, Creighton and Cullimore in front, and McLean was able to feel the puck in perfect position, and then he controls the rebound. That's a rare time where you'll see McLean down on his knees as he makes a save. The Blues now 0 for 5 on the power play. 10 of their 20 shots on McLean have come on those power plays. They trail 4-1. LaPerrier wins the draw to McInnes. He shoots, it deflects wide. Lume after the puck in the corner. Plays it ahead for Jackson. He's checked by Barron. Now LaPerrier. Feeds behind the net for Gilbert. He turns to the corner. Hit by Lume. Then air to Gilbert. Gilbert with a puck. Takes a little time, and it's knocked away by Oksuda. Back deep in the Blues end is Barron. Barron behind his net. Can't stop. Oksuda after him. A pass for Chasse by him. Puck goes the length of the ice. Lume to touch it. The whistle icing the call against the Blues. They're trailing it 4-1. Here in game three, the series even at a victory aside, and we're late in the second period. Fans, it's not hockey without ice, but ice and but ice light, the official beer sponsor of the NHL. Kenny, we talked at the start of this game about Vancouver's home record. Just 10, 8, and 6 during the course of the regular season. They also many times have gotten off to bad starts at the start of the game. They did tonight with the Blues scoring early, but the real key in this game, that five-minute major to Chasse, where Vancouver scored the two power plays and really took control of the game. Yeah, it turned in a hurry. Dufresne wrestles down a man behind the net. Russ Courtnall, Momesso loses the puck. Zombo has it. Ahead to LaPerriere. He'll shoot the puck in. Chasse after it, and in front, McLean clears it. And now there'll be a penalty. Rob Schick away from the play. I believe roughing will be the call. Gilbert will go off, and the Blues trailing by three will be shorthanded. Meanwhile, Rick Lee, we've talked about him. He's the first year coach. Meanwhile, getting back to the penalty, behind the play, Duchesne was there, but Gilbert had come back, and he'll take a roughing penalty on the play. Dufresne behind the net trying to hold on to Russ Courtnall. 
And it was just after all that action behind the Blues net that Gilbert ended up with the penalty. So 1.50 to go now in the second period. The Blues are trailing by three goals, and Greg Gilbert goes off. Well, I was mentioning Rick Lee, the first-year coach of the Vancouver Canucks. Last year it was Pat Quinn, who was also the president and general manager of this team, and Quinn telling us the other day he's had a tough time stepping away from the bench. Yeah, that was kind of interesting, wasn't it? He was... Rather eager to admit it's been tough for him. Loves the action. Veranic in over the line, tripped. Then Russ Courtnall steps out of the way of a check, a battle for the puck along the boards in the Blues, and it comes to Lume, right point to Bure. Power play, and they score! Momesso on a deflection in the slot. Bure a pass, great deflection by Momesso. 5-1 Vancouver, another Canucks power play goal. What a pass from Pavo Bure. At the right point, Momesso comes off the boards, heads to the front, he's snapping the stick on the ice. And Bure heard him, saw him, deflected it. Joseph reacted a little bit late. He thought he had it, but the puck just snuck in underneath his right pad. And that power play goal by Vancouver now has given them a 5-1 lead. But what a play by Bure. The deflection by Sergio Momesso and Joseph can't react quick enough and it's 5-1. Three power play goals and a shorthanded goal tonight. Burick Lee's Canucks, Babbage in his own end, checked by Ellick. Also Jackson there with Shanahan and here's Babbage behind the net to Cullimore. The young defenseman and he'll shoot the puck the length of the ice. First man there is Rutu. He centers! And Jackson and a good save by Joseph is stopped. Buck deep in the Blues end. Here's McKinnis. Under a minute to go in the second period. 5-1 Vancouver. Now at center ice, Oksuda intercepts a pass. Feeds back to his own line to Babbage. Babbage looks ahead, trying to get around Shanahan. Taken out by Shanahan, loses the puck. Shanahan can't go anywhere, and Linden slaps it in wide of the net. Momesso's third of the playoffs is second in this game. In the corner, in the Blues end, the Canucks centering. And Watton on the centering effort by Bure shoots wide. Here's Linden. Left point to Watton. He'll shoot. Joseph the save. Bure and Lume assisting on that power play goal at 1834. 14 seconds to go in the second period. And the puck on Lume's stick out of his own end ahead to Bure over the line around McInnes. Side of the net feeds in front. Linden tied up. Watton at the left point. Can't get a shot, keeps the puck in. Now it comes to center ice, and that's the end of the second period. Momesso scores twice in the period at 5.16 and 18.34. And after 40 minutes with a series tied at a victory apiece, in game three here in Vancouver, the Canucks lead the Blues 5-1. to one. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Back at the Pacific Coliseum, ready for the third period, and the Blues are trailing 5-1. to one. Tomorrow night, get rid of some of your frustration. See Arena Football at Keel Center. The home opener for the Stampede. Earl Bruce's team will take on Memphis, and there are tickets available at the Keel Center box office, or you can call Dial Ticks. 291 7600 Arena Football tomorrow night at Keel. And we talked at the start of the game about the Blues having to shut down Vancouver. In this second period, Vancouver had two two on one, three three on twos, and one three on one. They've had 10 odd man rushes in this game, and that's certainly hurt the Blues. Play and the Blues end as we're underway in the third. Both teams at full strength. Creighton from behind the net. Looks up ice. A pass for Tekin and knocked down. Hull gets the puck. Tries to work in. Does. A pass for Tekin and swept away by Barani. And the puck goes the length of the ice. Norton back to touch it. And an icing call against Vancouver. You wonder sometimes how much of the time is Brett Hull on the ice. In the first 40 minutes, he played over 19 minutes. So he was on the ice about half the time. And meanwhile, now Vancouver on defense. 
is a little shorthanded. We talked about Jeff Brown getting hit early in the game, the first couple of minutes. He's been out for the rest of this game with a bruised thigh, and Brett Hedekin was hit by an Al McKinnis shot, and we haven't seen him back since then. Now Lume breaks out. Feeds to Jeff Courtnall. He'll dump the puck in. Chasse tries to stay with Bure. Does a pretty nice job. Barron in the corner. Sweeps the puck around the net. Far side. Here's McKinnis out for Gilbert. Now on to Chasse. Chasse looking to feed in front. Trailer. LaPerriere. Great chance. Back and shot. Stopped by McLean. Boy, he's almost unbeatable. Blues keep the puck in. Gilbert slides it behind the net. McLean is there. Then Gilbert intercepts behind the goal for LaPerriere. Lume gets in his way. Now near side. Lume flips the puck up to Bure. Past him. Dufresne ahead for Chasse on his knees in the slot. Takes a shot. Blocked by Linden. He can't clear. Zombo a drive. Footer to flex right to McLean, who is there to make the save. Boy, what an opportunity in the first minute for Ian LaPerriere, who walked in and McLean was already down because of a collision in front of him. And LaPerriere had elected to go to his backhand. And while McLean was already down on the ice, he was able to kick out his left leg. Boy, he had time. And instead of taking the quick shot, it looked like he had the wide open half of the net on the far side. And McLean was knocked down by his own player after Greg Gilbert had knocked into the Vancouver defenseman and McLean was still able to use his left leg and stop Ian LaPerriere. He has been getting battered around by Blues players and his own defenseman, yet it hasn't seemed to phase McLean a bit. Blues win the draw. Shanahan at the blue line sends the puck wide of the net. Todd Ellick behind the goal, trying to get in front, and the pass taken away by Babbage. He'll flip the puck high in the air. Zombo grabs it with his glove, can't control, and Ellick. Slides the puck back to Dufresne. Dufresne and Zombo combined. Zombo shoots the puck in up front. Anderson, Ellick, and Shanahan. Then Cullimore a pass tipped out by Rutu. And Dufresne at the St. Louis blue line. Ahead to Zombo. Left wing for Ellick off his skate. Into the corner. He gets there. Centers, but Cullimore blocks the attempt. Now on the near side, here's Shanahan. He'll flip the puck behind the net for Ellick. Babbage gets there first. Gives the puck ahead to Jackson and then on to Rutu who will deflect it down the ice and there's no icing. Here's Jeff Norton. Both teams are changing. Norton at his own line. Ahead for Tekin and too far. And Lume back deep in his own end. Fires it up the far side. And a good check by Creighton as he knocks down Stoyanov. They battle for the puck in the corner. Here's Lume hooked a bit by Creighton. Behind the net Mark Watton clears to the far side. Pinching in is Duchesne and a shot blocked by Rowney. Quick outlet from Rowney to Tim Hunter. Hunter goes around Norton. Rowney gets the puck. Stops. Rowney has the puck. Gets hooked by Tekanen. Tries to center. Does. Hunter a shot and Joseph the save. Rowney was up three times and still made the play. Now Norton the pass too far for Creighton. Here's Mark Watton at center ice. He played all year in the AHL. Norton behind the Blues net. Checked in the corner by Rowney. And a big attempt by Stoyanov, but he misses. Puck back in the Vancouver zone. Here's Babbage as the Canucks and Blues are changing. Pass knocked down by Duchesne, and he carries it in offside. And play stops. Still early in the third. 5-1. Vancouver leaves it. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The youngsters for Vancouver have also played a part in this series. The rookie Alec Stoyanov. Tries to take a run at Jeff Norton, and Norton just able to get out of the way. Twist is on the ice. That's noteworthy. Here's Russ Courtnall on the ice. That's noteworthy. And he's stopped, and the Blues come to center ice. Here's McRae with Carboneau and Twist. McRae works in around Babbage into the corner. He gets hit. Wrestles in the corner. Back to get the puck. Russ Courtnall. Cullimore knocking McRae down. Ahead to Baranek. Now Baranek working in with Momesso, trying to get around McKinnis. He can't. Loose puck behind the Blues net. Here's Carboneau back. Carboneau with a puck in his own end. Left wing to McRae. He gets to the red line, flips the puck in, takes a swipe at Lume, goes after the puck. Watton beats him to it. Then McRae chases after Watton, can't catch him. LaPerriere knocks Bure down on a loose puck controlled by Zombo. 
I had to make Ray and the Canucks Linden takes the puck away to Momesso he scored twice he'll just dump the puck in 15 and a half minutes to go in the third period the Blues trail 5 1 in danger of falling behind two games to one in this series Le Perrier over the Vancouver line and the puck gets away and Lume shoots it into the Blues end. Zombo back chased by Jeff Kortnoff. And Jeff Kortnoff clears around far side. Duprain trying to help out Zombo. Cross checks Jeff Kortnoff, and there's going to be a penalty. Canucks finally have the puck touched by the Blues, and it'll be a cross checking penalty against Don Duprain with 15.09 left in the third period. Right at the side of the net, Dufresne had turned, and there was Cortnell. He got the stick up, and he caught Cortnell right on the chin, or look, maybe just underneath the chin on his neck. But Dufresne right there turned, got him first in the chest, and then his momentum with his stick and arms just came straight up the chest. I thought it got him in the chin, but on a second look at the replay, it wasn't the it wasn't the chin or the face of Cortnall it was the chest looked to knock the wind out of him somewhat and in either case Dufresne goes off and Vancouver will go back on the power play they've scored three power play goals tonight cross checking at 451 yeah, three power play goals for Vancouver one short handed goal Vancouver coming in was one for ten on the power play in the first two games after going one for twenty three in the power play in four regular season games with the Blues. Canucks set up. Lume far side for Linden. Ronning and Cortnall also up front. Lume left point. Right point to Bure. He advances along the boards. Hit by Anderson. Ronning gets the puck. Anderson intercepts. Can't clear. It's in the corner. Jeff Cortnall. Bumped by Norton. Then little Cliff Ronning plays it back. Right point to Pavel Bure. Left side. Lume works in. And front. Ronning a shot. Great glove save. Meanwhile, after passing the puck, Bure, I believe, got slashed by Anderson then Linden attacks Norton and Norton knocks him down now Ronning comes in to challenge Anderson because it was Anderson I believe who slashed Bure and Ronning goes after Anderson now Duchesne is there we've got sticks and elbows Ellick has a handle on Jeff Cortnall and we're having a little trouble there's been a lot of disorganization for the Blues tonight they're even disorganized here on pairing off the fight now Anderson kind of poking here and there but nobody's serious enough to pair up now Anderson might want to yell at Jeff Cortnall a little bit but he's going to be held away Bure is down on the ice being looked after by the trainer and now they're throwing soda pop and other debris at Glenn Anderson as he goes to the penalty box we see soda pop all over the ice out in front of the penalty box as the fans are extremely angry at Glenn Anderson. Well, Burry had the puck on the right point just as he passed it. Anderson comes across with one hand on the stick, and it looked like he hit him, he hit him up high, and then just the follow-through caught him up in the mouth. And what a save by Curtis Joseph as play continued, and Cliff Ronning ended up with the shot. But Cortnall is in front with Jeff Norton, Linden was there as well, and all the players came together. And I think what you said at the start of the period, Kenny, is coming to fruition. The Blues are trying to make a point to get ready for game number four, which will be here on Saturday night. Dufresne with a minute 32 to go in his penalty. We got a look on television at that replay. It didn't look like much of a slash that Anderson took. I saw initially him taking a bit of a swing at Bure then I followed the puck the boy Bure went down like he'd been two handed but I don't believe it was much of a slash uh, it certainly wasn't two hands it was one hand on the stick as he swung and it just again the I think the momentum of the stick he hit him in the arms and I think it just went right up it was actually the blade that ended up catching him just on the chin or just underneath the mouth and in either case Anderson I believe has been thrown out of the game. Yes, he gets a five minute major for high sticking and Vancouver will now have a five on three for the next one minute and thirty two seconds. And then of course that five minute major will stay until the end of everything. Well the real key was that after he kind of gave him a soft slash the stick carried up and caught Bure in the face and 
That clearly is a five minute penalty. The Blues will be two men short for a minute 32. They trail it by a score of five to one. Let's pause here. Five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Glenn Anderson goes off a game misconduct in a five minute major for high sticking. Dufresne already in the penalty box 132 to go on his and meanwhile Anderson not only gets the five minute major and the game misconduct he also gets a 10 minute misconduct and I see Jeff Courtnall will take a 10 minute misconduct also now well, that all stemmed from in front of the net when the players got together after the whistle and they continued to try and throw punches and push and shove and finally Rob Schick hands out a couple of misconducts Mike Keenan all season long has looked the same behind the bench and I think tonight he has looked a little different. I don't know that I want to pass judgment on exactly how he has looked but again I sensed a, a difference in his uh, feelings and his demeanor before the game and I have really sense when we have looked at him on the bench a little uh, a little different look and a little different feel very hard to hard to pinpoint but believe me different well very frustrated and I think it goes back to game two the mistakes that the Blues made in game two leading that two to nothing and then again three to two and making the mental mistakes that they made and letting Vancouver back into the game in a playoff game Vancouver winning five three and tying the series at one and even in this game tonight the Blues look like the team that have been disheveled the shorthanded goal was a classic example. They had plenty of players back, but no one looking around and being aware and alert of what was happening on the ice, and they score the shorthanded goal to make it 3-1. And that first Momesso goal in the second period where strength, Blues had the puck in their own end. A couple of big guys just pushed the Blues around, set up the goal. The kind of thing we have seen too much of in game two and game three. Buck behind the Blues net, Tekin and gets it. Shoots at the length of the ice. Again, the Blues are two men short. They have Hall out there with Tikkanen and Norton. Here come the Canucks, Lume, Linden, Rutu, Ronning, and Bure, who is just fine. Buck knocked away. Hall after it. McLean comes way out, clears it off the glass, and Lume in control of the puck in his own end. Under 14 minutes to go in the third period. Canucks trying to add to a 5-1 lead. Bure stops at the left point. He gets a little room. And that'll happen when you only have three defenders to Linden to Rue two to Ronning who deflects the puck wide. Ronning right point to Lume. Now on the near boards to Ronning. He moves into the circle back to Lume. Far side. Bure. Canucks are three for seven on the power play tonight. They lead it 5-1. Far side to Lume in deep to Linden in front. Puck deflects away and Ronning hits the post from a bad angle at the side of the post. Here's Bure on the near side. In the corner to Rutu. Now to Ronnie. Ronnie in front to Linden. He shoots. He scores. Trevor Linden. A two man advantage. And the Canucks take a 6 1 lead. And the bad news for the Blues is there were three seconds left in Dufresne's penalty. What an effort by Cliff Ronning. He reaches out and just deflects the puck before the Blues can play it just dives after the loose puck right on the stick of Trevor Linden and the quick shot just inside the far post past Curtis Joseph terrific effort by Ronning Linden with the good shot past Curtis Joseph and that's another power play goal number four on the night for Vancouver there's Ronning again just diving out taking it before Tekin can get to the puck and just pokes it right over to Linden who Puts it away to make it 6-1. Trevor Linden's first of the playoffs. 6-48. The Canucks are 4 for 8 on the power play. They came in this season 2 for 33 against the Blues in six games. Now Joseph gets the puck, takes a bit of a slap at Momesso, and they whistle and will have a face-off deep in the blue zone. The Dufresne penalty is over. Still 3-14 to go in the five-minute major penalty. To Glenn Anderson. Ryan Curtis Joseph very frustrated and he's he's looked like a frustrated goaltender tonight. He has seemed to be fighting the puck. Doesn't have that same confidence that we've seen in the past. 
He's let in a couple of goals that were questionable tonight. Here's Babbage, right point, left point to Cullimore. Not a rush, court and all. Back to Babbage. He's got room. He moves in and shoots wide. Linden from Ronnie and Rutu at 648 to make it 6-1 Vancouver and the puck way back into the St. Louis end. Carbono slows up Cullimore. Barron shoots the puck in, and the Blues are changing. Babbage from behind the Vancouver net, out in the right wing to Russ Courtnall. He cuts around LaPerriere to the red line. He'll shoot the puck in. Joseph behind the net can't stop it. Here's Momesso in the near corner. Momesso bothered by Norton, gives the puck to Barani. He moves into the circle, takes a shot, and it's finally kicked out by Joseph. Baranek behind the Blues net. Gives the puck in the corner to Momesso. Now to Baranek. He gets held by Norton. And Duchesne comes in, slips the puck up to Gilbert, and he drives it the length of the ice. Still 2.10 to go in the second five-minute penalty for Vancouver in this game. Then Momesso puts a headlock at center ice on Norton and whispers sweet nothings in his ear, and Momesso will take a penalty. And he'll scream at Rob Schick on his way to the penalty box. Momesso will get a holding penalty on the play grabbing Jeff Norton as they were coming out of the zone well behind the play as the puck had already been shot down to Kirk McLean who was handling it and Momesso and Norton coming out of the out of the blue zone and Momesso with the bear hug goes off for holding look like a teenager putting his arm around a good friend <laughs> and whispering I don't think they're good friends <laughs> <laughs> time of the penalty is 8 10. So 209 left on the Anderson penalty a two minute penalty now up for Momesso and it is four on four the Blues goal scored by Brett Hall his second of the playoffs at the 22nd mark of the first period 58 seconds later the Canucks tied it with the first of two goals on their initial five minute power play they lead it 6 1 in the third Dufresne fires the puck behind the net played by McLean up the boards knocked down by the Blues loose puck and here's Mark Watton ahead to Dane Jackson into the St. Louis end behind the back pass for Rutu. Now Rutu tied up by LaPerriere and run to the boards. Zombo slows up Watton the puck on Rutu's stick knocked away and Dufresne clears the center ice. Here's Lume with it. The Blues have LaPerriere out there with Chasse now Dufresne and Zombo. At center ice, LaPerriere gets the puck, shoots it in. Now both teams are changing. LaPerriere in a screamy match with someone on the bench. And he'll finally go into the Blues bench. But meanwhile, Rob Schick from way across the ice is going to stop play. And he's going to give LaPerriere a penalty for standing in front of the Canucks bench and screaming at someone. Well, there's a break in the action. Canucks six, Blues one. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Ian LaPerriere gets a 10-minute misconduct with 11.02 to go in regulation time, and the Blues trailing 6-1. to one. Now, Ken, we talked about the Blues forecheck. The times they have gotten, in, gotten the puck in deep, and we haven't talked about this as much, but... Kirk McLean has handled the puck extremely well in his own zone and has made just those little outlet passes off the glass or off the boards to help out the Vancouver defense. He's been a real key player in this game. Both teams, a man short. McLean with a puck ahead to Bure. He'll weave back, leaves it for Jason Cullimore to the blue line. Stick handling to the red line. He'll just flip the puck in. And Joseph leaves it for Barron. Barron and McInnes, Creighton. And Chasse, far side to McKinnis. Across the ice to Creighton. He's into the Vancouver end. A pass to Chasse. He looks for someone to feed to in front for Creighton, but Babbage intercepts. Babbage hands the puck to McKinnis and a shot, and Babbage blocks it. He's got Creighton all over him. Gets dragged down by Creighton. Bure gets the puck, gives it to Linden, and it slips away. There's 10-15 to go. In the third period here at the Pacific Coliseum and the Blues trail Vancouver 6-1. The Canucks about ready to go up two games to one in this best of seven series. Both teams changing Vancouver out of their own end. It's Bure around Ellie. Gaining speed. Trying to cut in. Backhand shot. Save. And with a net wide open, Duchesne kicks the puck to the corner. Loses his stick. 
And the puck cleared all the way to center ice. Now Momesso out of the penalty box in Vancouver has a six second power play. Watton shoots the puck in. Around behind the net out the far side to Todd Ellett. He'll turn and blast at the length of the ice. And now the penalty is over. The five minute major to Anderson and McRae serving it. Here's Ronning in his own end. He gives the puck to Watton up to Oksuda. Norton intercepts, slides at far side for Shanahan. In over the line. To McRae in front. And Oksuda all over him. Then a shot and a save by McLean. Lume can't clear. Right point to Shane. A shot right on the save. And Shanahan can't get the rebound. Puck cleared out. Norton shoots it right back in. And it's offside. St. Louis. Well, let's take a look at how the scoring has gone. Hull scored early in the first period. Less than a minute later, Lume scored a power play goal. Jeff Cortnall made a 2 1 with a power play goal. And Babbage, a short handed goal in the first period. Momesso scored his second and third of the playoffs in the second period. And Linden has scored at 6.48 here in the third period. And our scoring recap brought to you by our GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomarito, and Brocklin GMC. Ken Wilson, Joe Micheletti, Bruce Affleck, we're in Vancouver. Remember, game four is here on Saturday night, same time, 9.30 Central Daylight Time. Canucks control in their own end. Nine minutes to go. That center ice for Anik, long shot wide of the net. Joseph controls it off the end boards. They have a very lively boards here in Vancouver. Zombo with a puck behind his net. Both teams at full strength. He's on defense with Dufresne. He gives him the puck on the near side. Back to Zombo. He'll clear it up to Hull. His pass hits Baranek, and here's Zombo again. Dean four checked by Russ Courtnall. Near side to Hull. Hull looks across the ice. Gives the pass to Tekin, and he'll shoot the puck in, and McLean behind his net. Banks the puck off the boards in the near corner. Chopped at. Canucks control. Watton clears it out off to Crane. Zombo back in his own end, pursued by Momesso. Far side for Tekinen, but he was too far out there. And Baranek trying to shoot the puck in. Hits the linesman. Zombo now to Dufresne. Losing their own end. Back to Zombo. He gets the puck ahead at center ice to Carbono. Loser changing. Carbono poke check. Puck goes to the corner. Lume sweeps in to get it. He'll shoot it off the glass on the far side. Right onto McKinnis's stick at center ice. McKinnis dumps the puck in from his side of center. Back to touch it. Watt and one linesman decides to wave off icing. There's nothing wrong with that. But the clock run at center ice. Oksuda working in, trying to get around Barron. Can't. Taken out. Ridden to the boards nicely by Barron. Puck behind the Blues net. Gilbert back to get it. A pass for Carbono. And intercepting Jackson. He gets hit by McKinnis. Oksuda in the corner. Barron on him. Able to center. McKinnis intercepts. He gets the puck ahead and Chasse feeds to Gilbert from the blue line. A shot right on and a glove save for McLean. Blues completing a line change. They trail it 6-1. And Linden at his own line. Hit by Shanahan with the puck to Dane Jackson and he'll just flip it in. 7-10 remaining. Vancouver 31 shots on goal. The Blues have had 24. Blues in their own zone with a puck. Ellen leaves it for Duchesne. Ahead for Shanahan. Puck will go the length of the ice. McLean just plays it. That takes away the icing. This is Cullimore. Up the near side for Pavel Buret. In the middle. Pass hits Hunter. Tries to get the puck to Linden. Finally, Tim Hunter slaps it in. Back deep, Shanahan. He goes behind his net and stops. In the corner to Norton. Norton in the middle of the rink to Duchesne. Right wing now for the Twister. Twister has the puck slip away. Gets it back. Can't get a shot. Puck goes right to McLean. And he'll slide it into the near side for Linden. And the referee knocked down. Rob Schick, he's slow in getting up. Canucks at center ice. Here's Bure working in over the line. His pass hits to Shane. Now Twist and Hunter ready to go at center ice. Watton grabs Twist. Shanahan grabs him. One linesman has Hunter. And we're going to have a break in the action. The players are separated. Canucks up 6-1. And this is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Rob Schick is hurting as he took a spill in the Vancouver zone. His left hand and arm, he wears a cast that's a 
removable cast. He was in one of the last regular season games in Los Angeles, fell to the ice, and he was cut with a skate. Cut him for 50 stitches and right to the bone. Cut all the muscles and all the nerves, and they told him he could have the rest of the year off. He decided to keep refereeing, and they tell him he's not going to have the feeling back in his hand and in his arm for a good six months. Uh, the Canucks trying to get out of their own end. Norton steals to Creighton. Creighton waits, shoots, stick save McLean. Chasse runs right into McLean, and Schick stops play. He'll send him to the penalty box. Chasse gives McLean another shove, and then quickly two Canucks jump all over Chasse, one of them Lume, the other Momesso. Schick is trying to tell the Canucks that he'll take care of Denny Chasse. Kenny, just prior to that, the last shift when Hunter and Twist both went off for roughing, Tony Twist also ran into Kirk McLean. And this happened after Creighton took the shot. Chasse gets kind of pushed in, but he didn't make a tremendous effort to stop his momentum. And then after the whistle blew, both Chasse and McLean were standing there with the net off, and Chasse Gives a little push, a little bit of a shove to Kirk McLean before the rest of the Canucks came in to help out. Twist and Hunter taking those roughing penalties at 13:40. Now at 14 minutes, Chasse will get his share. The team's playing four on four with Hunter and Twist off at the time. The Canucks have a 6-1 lead here in the third period. Now well, McLean again makes a save, but Chasse's coming in, gets a little bit of a push, but he doesn't slow down his momentum. He just keeps going until both McLean and the net come off, and then after the whistle had blown, a late push by Chasse, and Momesso comes in along with a few other of the Canucks. Still six minutes to go, and now the Blues will be two men short again. It'll be a four on three for the Vancouver Canucks who have scored four power play goals and one shorthanded goal to lead this game six to one. A double minor for Chasse. He gets two for interfering with a goaltender and two for roughing. And the look on the faces of the Blues players in the penalty box pretty well tells the story. It's been a long night for the Blues. They got off to such a great start with Brett Hall scoring that goal, even strength 20 seconds in, and then just minutes after that, the five-minute major to Denny Chasse for kneeing Jeff Brown, who has been out for the rest of the game, and Vancouver quickly scored two power play goals. The Blues finally got a power play of their own, and Dave Babbage comes up with the shorthanded goal to make it 3-1 after one. Now the Blues work in. Here's Creighton. Blues are two men short. Canucks one man short. Creighton tied up in the corner to the right of the Vancouver net. He's on with Duchesne and Norton. Puck comes loose far side. Duchesne takes it, takes a shot, the save, but in the corner, Lume and Creighton mixing it up, and we're going to get another penalty. Adam Creighton will go off this time for roughing. He and Yurke Lume were in the corner together. And with Creighton trying to get away from Lume, Lume's got a hold of his sweater from behind. And finally, the left hand by Adam Creighton with Lume didn't have a stick, but he hit him with a left right square in the jaw. And not more than 10 feet away was referee Rob Schick who makes the call. And Creighton goes off, and there is a crowded penalty box for the Blues. Reminds me of the shower I had in our New York hotel, a little bit crowded. Well, you can't follow the Blues on the road sometimes, but you can stay on top of your game anyway with a post dispatch. Call 340-8888 and get the post delivered at home. Five Blues players in the penalty box, and the attendant in there is trying to find some room. He doesn't look real comfortable. Here is Russ Courtnall into the blue zone. Feeds left wing. Lume catches up with a puck in the corner, sends it off the boards behind the net near side to Ronnie. It's four on three. Right point to Bure. They lead it 6-1. Lume of the Canucks near side to Bure. Ronnie's at the side of the net. Bure straight away to Lume. Right side Bure. A shot hits the side of the net. Down to 5-10 to go. Somebody's broken his stick. It's Duchesne. Bure out near the blue line. Now straight away. Feeds left side for Lume into the circle. He's at the dot. Duchesne gets a stick thrown from the bench. 
And Tikkanen has to glove the puck out. I guess he had given Duchesne his stick. Smart play by Tikkanen throwing his stick to the defenseman who it's more important for the defenseman to have the stick than the forward. Then he's able to clear the puck with his glove. Canucks set up again. They Blues were trying to get the puck or the stick rather to Duchesne. They were handing it there but never got it out to him. Now McKinnis on. Can't get the puck. Rotting feeds to Lume. Near side to Buren. Hunter will be back in a moment along with Twist. In front, Russ Corton on the Lume. Shoots wide. Rotting behind the net. McKinnis slaps the puck away. Now the Blues are two men short. Here's Bure a shot off a stick wide. Rotting behind the net. It's five on three. Right circle. Corton all a shot. Joseph stops that. Rotting centers. Russ Courtnall gets the puck. Now the Blues should get a man back, but they can't get him out of the penalty box. Finally, Twist comes out after about 15 seconds. He was wedged in. He thought he was a sausage in a can. Here's Ronnie a shot. Bad angle, a save, rebound. And Hunter knocking away at Joseph. Twist comes in, trying to get to Hunter. Gets knocked down. Twist wants to get at Hunter. They ought to let him go. But the linesman trying to keep him apart. Schick pulls at Barron. And the linesman have a hold of Tim Hunter and Tony Twist. Now Gilbert and Ronning getting into it. Here comes Bure in to pull Gilbert away. And Twist and Hunter are still at relatively close range. On the save, it was a shot from a bad angle. And Hunter kept slapping away after Curtis Joseph had made the save. Now Greg Gilbert. And referee Rob Schick continue to talk things over behind the net. Twist, meanwhile, is screaming at Hunter from long range. All of this with 345 to go. Blues trailing 6-1. And the Blues still shorthanded. They've been shorthanded much of the night. Well, a shot from the bad angle. Joseph made the save. Hunter was there, but Joseph was able to cover up. And Hunter with a couple of late whacks. That's probably in retaliation to what the Blues have been trying to do to McLean. And Twist comes in. Hunter doesn't want to throw down his gloves or his stick. Twist wants him to. This has been a third period, Ken, where things could have really gotten out of hand. I think the Blues have tried hard to get things out of hand, but the officials have done a good job keeping things as relatively calm as they have been able to. Still 3.45 to go in this third period we've seen a lot of activity in the Blues penalty box still four players over there have we seen much of Brett Hall lately no he he was out earlier in the period to kill the five on three and then I saw him one other shift after that in fact even Al McKinnis late in the first period Al McKinnis didn't play for well over nine minutes so Mike Keenan has benched a number of players during the course of this game tonight Four minutes for roughing for both Tony Twist and Tim Hunter and we'll have a face off here and try to get the last three minutes and forty five seconds completed the Blues believe me are not making any friends here tonight at the Pacific Coliseum where the attendance is thirteen thousand four hundred and nine about twenty seven twenty eight hundred short of capacity thirteen four zero nine the attendance and Brett Hall is just on the other side of Basil McRae and next to John Casey and. 15 seconds ago he tried to go out onto the ice started going onto the ice and was obviously called back and took a seat next to John Casey. So Brett is at the end of the bench. Face off in front of the Blues bench Dufresne for the shorthanded Blues shoots the puck into the Vancouver end. Creighton has 118 to go in his penalty. 6 1 Vancouver. They're going to take a 2 to 1 lead in this best of seven series. Lume ahead to Jeff Court and all Gilbert back. Gets in the way of the pass to Rutu. The puck deep in the Blues end. Joseph clears it out. Tikkanen catches up with it. One man back, Lume. And Tikkanen fans, and the puck goes just wide of the net. Now Jeff Cortinall to Bure. This fella can accelerate. Left wing to Rutu. Now trailing Jeff Cortinall, and he fans on a shot. Puck off the boards in front. Zombo takes it and fires it down the ice. The Blues shorthanded for another 43 seconds. And just three minutes to go here in the third period. Here's Momessa. He scored a pair trying to work in on North. Can't. Puck goes to Carbono. He can't get it out. Ellick clears it out. Bure has it. Feeding it into the center of the rink. Jeff Portnall far side for the Canucks captain Trevor Linden. He's at the red line. Now to Momesso. 
left wing to Bure. Bure stops on the power play. Stick handling with a puck on the left wing. Left point Babbage. Right point to Linden. Back to Babbage. He has a shorthanded goal. And to Bure. Shot stop. Linden stopped by Joseph. Bure on a little tricky deflection almost beat Joseph. Here's Jeff Cordenal. His shot and a pad saved by Joseph. And he reaches out to grab the puck and cover it and stop play. The Blues get Creighton back on. They're at full strength. 2.19 to go in the game. 6 1 Vancouver. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Just back to action. Duchesne at center ice. And a pass too far. Babbage in his own end. Clears the puck over the glass and into the crowd. And the action stopped. And we'll have a faceoff in the Canuck zone with a minute. 45 to go in the game. And the Blues with a couple of hits in this game. One, the knee injury to Brown. Brett Hedekin hasn't played also. Another defenseman who got hit by an Al McKinnon shot late in the second period. So in this game, Vancouver's had to go with mostly five defensemen and four here in this third period. The Canucks with 12 power plays, and they have four of their six goals on the power play. Face off in the neutral zone. Creighton works in over the line. Gilbert there also. And finally, the play is offside. Hey, Blues fans, remember, it's not whether you win or lose. It's how you enjoy the game. So always reach for smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush lights. 140 to go. Game four here in Vancouver Saturday night. Game five at Keel Center, a 7 o'clock start next Monday night. Canucks, Momesso can't control a pass. McInnes works in offside. Now Shanahan and Cullimore are going to go. They might as well let him go. Cullimore and Shanahan, they've got each other wrapped up in front of the Vancouver net. Shanahan wrestles them down to one knee. They both go down. Shanahan tries to get a quick right hand in, and the officials will separate Brendan Shanahan and Jason Cullimore. The Canucks defenseman with 1.32 to go, and another fan throws a soda pop container out on the ice. Cullimore's a big, strong kid. Six foot five, 220 pounds, and they'll lead Cullimore and Shanahan to their respective benches where they can head to the dressing rooms. Cullimore had the puck. Shanahan came in with the hit. They came together. Cullimore tries to throw him off. Shanahan ended up coming back at him looking for the challenge. Finally Shanahan was the first to drop his gloves. Cullimore dropped his and was able to just hold on to Brendan. Brendan did not give young Jason many choices there. No. No. Cullimore is one of those players. I mentioned this the other game Kenny he's big he's strong skates very well for a big man and has come in and played extremely well for the Vancouver Canucks but he doesn't play with a lot of meanness he doesn't he very seldom throws down his gloves and and fight and Brendan Shanahan tried to induce him there and was not real successful ice needs to be cleaned a bit but Rob Schick has the right idea he tells his linesman stand there drop the thing get a couple players there let's drop the puck 132 to go. He'll drop it between Tikkanen and Baranek. Shanahan gets a double minor for Ruffy. Cullimore also gets two for high sticking and two for Ruffy. Now they're a little concerned about the scoreboard, and Rob Schick goes across the way to talk to the off ice officials. The Blues, they're counting the players out there. The Blues have four, and the Canucks have four. Now the Blues send Carbono out. The Canucks send Oksuda out. They want to play five on five here. And that's all right with everybody. They drop the puck. Babbage has it in the Canucks end. Clears it ahead to Baranek. Now to Oksuda. Oh, then Baron a big check on Baranek. Oksuda gets a pass in front. Fans as he's set up by Russ Courtnall. Tekin and plays the puck ahead to Hall. So Brett's back on the ice. He can't control. Here's Oksuda muscling his way in front. Knocked down from behind by Carbono. Tikkanen up to Hall. Hall back to Tikkanen. A minute five to go. Tikkanen works into the Vancouver end. He's checked and then the puck out and back in over the blue line. Brought in by Carbono in an offside call with a minute two to go. And the Blues trailing 6-1. 
Well, the Blues have certainly come out in this period and let Vancouver know that they haven't liked what's gone on in this game. And Ken, again, I go back to what you said at the start of the period. Down five to one, you've got to try and do something to get the other team thinking that you're going to be ready for the next game. And the Blues come out, have come out in this third period. They've hit everything they could. They've slashed everything they could. They've tried to induce the Cal or the uh, Vancouver Canucks into throwing down the gloves a little bit. And Vancouver has turned the cheek for the most part in this period. The Blues have uh, shown a little spirit, but my golly, it's uh, a little spirit a lot late. But at least they've shown something here. Well, again, they need to win one game. That's why they came to Vancouver to try and win one game. Certainly, they would have loved to. The first one has slipped away, and they're going to have they're going to have another chance on Saturday. Here's Babbage to center ice. He fires the puck in wide. Norton back to play it. 44 seconds to go. Up to Tikkanen. and he'll clear it out. Now Babbage with a puck shoots it right back in. Norton has it. We're just killing time now, folks. 30 seconds to go in game three of this Western Conference quarterfinal series and the Canucks will win this one pass up for taken in too far Lume shoots the puck in down to 20 seconds remaining here's Norton for the Blues just clearing it out Calgary wins tonight at San Jose Chicago wins at Toronto Detroit wins at Dallas eight seconds to go here the Canucks come home and win to take a 2 1 lead. Puck cleared out. Norton brings it back in offside with four seconds remaining. Who blew the whistle? The linesman should never have missed it. <laughs> it should be a fine. I don't know why he blew the, the whistle. Should he should have just, down on that. <laughs> just said I didn't see it. Four seconds to go. Face off in the center ice area. Game four here Saturday night. They drop the puck. Canucks control. That'll do it. The final. Canucks six. Blues one. We'll return in a moment. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Coliseum. The Canucks win it by a resounding 6-1 final. Ken Wilson and Joe Micheletti welcoming you back to the Pacific Coliseum. And it just was a long, tough night for the Blues and not a whole lot you could say. No, it was a, a Vancouver team that found themselves falling behind early on the Brett Hall goal. And then the real the real turning point was the five minute major to Denny Chasse when the Blues had the early momentum. Then Vancouver gets two power play goals. They had a shorthanded goal in the first and and the game was over for the most part. And our third period summary brought to you by Hardy showing the Trevor Linden power play goal at 648 shots on the night 36 25 Vancouver the Canucks had four power play goals the period summary brought to you by Hardy's starring the best fried chicken in the game today. Turning now to our Bush three stars. The number three star in the night goes to Sergio Momesso, who had a couple of goals in the second period, the fourth and fifth of the game. Number two, Yerke Lumi, a terrific game. One goal and two assists. And the number one star, goaltender Kirk McLean. He's been terrific all three games. So Vancouver wins it by a score of six to one, and we go down to Bruce Affleck. Oh, thank you, Ken. We're going to go to our Bush play of the game, and really it was a game where the Blues thought they were off to uh, Brett Hall scores within 20 seconds. Then the next four minutes, two power play goals by the Canucks. And really, the one that uh, broke their back, I guess, was the shorthanded goal by David Babich. And really, you look at it, and uh, the Blues were really never in this contest except for the first few minutes. So our Bush play of the game is the shorthanded goal by David Babich. Cordell comes down the right wing, makes the turn. Remember, the Canucks are shorthanded, and Babich comes in on the play. A good play by David Babich to follow in across the blue line. He just lets go a shot. Low and he beats Curtis Joseph far stick side glove side pardon me and that gave the Canucks a three to one lead and that's our Bush play of the game. Well the next game is coming up Saturday night. We hope you'll join us in Vancouver. Our thanks to Tom McLaughlin our producer director for Bruce Affleck and Joe Micheletti. This is Ken Wilson. Thanks for joining us again. The final score tonight the Vancouver Canucks six the St. Louis Blues one. St. Louis Blues Hockey has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of KPLR TV and KMOX Radio. Our next telecast here on KPLR TV St. Louis 11 will be Saturday night game number four here in Vancouver. That telecast will begin at 930 Central Time. Playoff hockey.
Hockey has been brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Your Missouri, Illinois, Lincoln Mercury dealers, McDonald's, proud sponsors of the Blues. Have you had your break today? Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, the low fare airline. Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. The Discover card, it pays to discover. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomberito, and Brooklyn GMC. Boatman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Your neighborhood, St. Louis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. CMS Home Mortgage Corporation. When the bank says no, CMS says yes. Hardy, starring the best fried chicken in the game today. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts.